We're getting ready to get started. Don't. Yes, I do. Yep. Yeah, you have all your members present. You have uh, Mark and Foxy to I assume. Hello. Are, are, do you folks have a have a quorum without me? Do you need me for the meeting or not? We have a quorum, but you know we'd like to have like your participation. It's your, but it's your call. Well, tonight is a little difficult for me because I had an emergency medical procedure last night, uh, and I'm not feeling spectacular. I mean, that's so that's we, fine. We have a, we have a full board if, without. If you wouldn't mind. I'll I'll beg off tonight as long as you don't need me. And yeah, not, a, not at all. I, it wasn't a big deal, but they had to retrieve a, a, a dental thing from a from my esophagus, and it, it took about seven hours and just oh, knocked right. me out. But anyway, um, thank you very much. I'll I'll okay. say it. Okay. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Go ahead, Mark. Thank you. Good night. Mark's going to be excused for this meeting. That's good no reason. <laughs> First item, continuation of the consideration of the meeting minutes from November 9th, 2022. Myself, Joe, and Steve. Does anyone have any questions, comments, corrections? Mm -hmm. All right. Is there a motion to approve as presented? Motion to approve as presented. For a second. Steve. All in favor? Aye. 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 I abstain. Motion to abstain. Paul abstained. He wasn't there. Yeah, I wasn't there. November 22nd. Let's see. Myself, OJ, and Paul. Three of us will vote on these. Does do either of you have any changes, comments, corrections? I'm fine with it. I'm fine. I'll make a motion to accept. Second. Paul second. Paul seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 And all right, Joe and uh, Steve have abstained because they weren't here. Item on the agenda. 
conceptual site plan review, conceptual 2022-22, map 118, lot 50, lot 51, and lot 52. The Millery Group LLC, Greg Nash, Copley Properties LLC, Drew Bedard, demolished two single family homes and apartment houses, replaced a four story apartment building with mixed uses after merging the three lots. Someone here, yeah, Drew? Yep. Go ahead. Uh, good evening. Thank you for your time. Uh, Drew Goddard with Copley Properties. I'm also, uh, I have a residence in town as well and uh, operate a, a construction company within the town as well. Uh, my project engineer cannot be here tonight uh, for a holiday party at his business. So I'll try to field any specific questions, but we'll table anything more specific to him. Uh, I just wanted to kind of, I am under agreement for the, the free parcel and wanted to come in front of you, in front of the board to show a concept, get your feedback, get some ideas about trying to move this project forward. Um, would you like me to run through kind of my highlights yeah, of please. what I'm looking to do? Um, the packet that I've been able to provide you is kind of some bullets of what we're looking to do or conceptually what we're thinking about doing about, uh, it is to remove all the buildings that exist on one site would include two houses, the, the motel and garage unit. Uh, build a new four-story building. Uh, it's roughly a 6,000 square foot footprint over four floors. Um, the building, we wanna be able to design it so it meets uh, all setbacks. Uh, the primary eaves will be 35 feet or less. Uh, overall lot coverage, once we merge all three parcels, will we'll be at or below 70%. <laughs> Uh, on the concept plans, we were trying to take into consideration some snow, snow storage areas. Uh, we'll be giving up two curb cuts along Main Street, we're proposing, which ultimately, if we reline those streets, you may gain one or two more parking spaces along Main Street. Uh, the main entrance would be off of Church Street with a secondary entrance going on to Coolidge Street. Um, as shown, we're showing 41 parking spaces to be behind the building. The building will be front loaded along Main Street. The, the plans that we have is an aerial shot. We've, we've flown a drone, so we have all the topography. We haven't done boundary yet. That'll be happening in a few weeks. Um, so this is using tax map data and a, uh, the drone to get topography. And we've overlaid the tax map. So this is an exact boundary, but it's just conceptual at this point. So it gives us good direction. Building will be front loaded along Main Street with parking in the rear. Um, the second page is just the concept drawing that will kind of show the building, the layout. It'll be a mixed use building. Looking to office space, it would be to house my own business. So we have a uh, a permanent location here in town and a re retail location on the first floor. And the remaining um, parts of the building I'm proposing or asking for 20 residential units broken out between three, two, and one bedroom studio apartments. Our, our plan is for these to be all long term leases, six months or plus. Um, you know, our goal here is I can't call it affordable housing because we're not getting subsidies from the state or the town. But what we're looking to be able to do is be able to provide reasonable accommodations for, um, for individuals in the town, safe, durable. Uh, these aren't high-end homes. These aren't high-end uh, apartments. They're not gonna be Airbnbs. Uh, we're looking for, for these to be uh, permanent long-term rentals. Carol, what, what is the minimum um, requirement for parking spaces as far as size of the parking space you know offhand. Um, yeah it used to be 10 by 20 and now it's a foot shorter um it was 19 by nine okay i mean it's it's 72 square feet uh, or something like or 70 square feet but it doesn't round off i mean it just doesn't right. calculate right but All right well you said 170 square foot per space does that will that meet the ordinance do you know how many 170 square feet. He said the parking space is eight and a half feet by 20 feet each. Well, well, the check, board it's only square footage. Square footage. It yeah. doesn't say 
Okay. It used to say. Right. That's fine. Um, 20 by 10. Yeah. And then her came in and you reduced it. And then it was rounded off. Because Pat didn't like okay. unrounded numbers. Anyone else have any questions? Yeah. Oh, Joe. Yeah, I do. All right, Paul, uh, Joe, I saw Joe first and you can go. No, it doesn't matter. Uh -oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, good. Yeah. How tall is building B on the main street? You're right up to the street almost, the sidewalk. That's like having a wall right down the street. It would get to be a tunnel effect in Lincoln. If you had looked at the old mass, uh, the old site plan, downtown committee, they had, they had voted, they had put this cost, they put in that complete book, like the stick, that was the way the town of Lincoln was. This is totally again what been going, they voted on years ago, not an, not official. But the cost that the town was looking for, nothing like having a wall right down the whole length of Main Street. And your building there will be as tall as Coolidge Place right on Main Street. Be about four stories. Am I correct? It'll be four stories, correct. And but it'll be and your parking on the street cannot be counted because that's the relevant going away in a couple of years. Yeah. They could take away all the parking on Main Street. I don't know if you can do that or not. No, and I was not counted that within our parking spaces. I was just and when the drive cut coming out on the coolest place, right at the top of the hill, is that a safe scenario to come in and out on? You know, that would definitely be something for the engineers to be look at topography, um, radius, uh, that secondary exit. That's very really narrow street there. Is is we more have it for fire trucks, so they'll be tight trend for fire trucks. What? Going up Cool Street, it'd be a tight turn for fire truck. It, it would be. So I we're not that's that exit is not is not necessarily something that we need for this project. It was just that we thought that it might be better to have uh, another means of e egress. So that's something that if it doesn't seem functional or or beneficial, it's something that we can definitely remove. Also, we realize that back lot on this side we can never be built on. Which lot you right but on, on main uh, coming off church street the parking layer they have at the uh, motel cannot be built on there's a state and there's a state uh encumbrance on it when they all wipe the roof church street they said the building was torn down land is given over back to the owner they can never be built on i don't know if you realize that or not there's an encumbrance on it from the state of new hampshire and what, what part what part are you talking I, well, right on the corner Right here, he, it shows a building right up the corner. Is that the lot you're talking about? Correct, that yeah. lot on the building right at the corner is the state encumbrance on it. It's never been relieved to the town. That's so. My it's understanding is there is an easement. Yeah, would it would you show the encumbrance on it? That's correct. So we wouldn't be changing the topography or the, the location of that. Um, sidewalk and roadway as it exists now because there is an easement on the deed for that specific encroachment. The encroachment, we looked at the vacant open space or parking, whatever. Um, the well, would not be in that encroachment. Uh, we're, we would not be encroaching if you look on the site plan with the, with the where the, uh, based on the easement that exists on the deed, we would not be obviously encroaching. Um, that area. And as far as building location, it's definitely flexible. It's a relatively flat lot. Uh, moving the building back and for parking in the front, um, it was one of those things just based on discussion is that we're hiding the parking out back and then moving the building forward, but flip flopping it, it really, is, it really doesn't really change the site because well, uh, it should could be a relatively, you know. I'm concerned about that building that close to the street. It's a higher than the street now, but, but the land's high, but seven to 10 feet higher than the street now coming across the level. The main street, it's much, it's much higher, it's about seven feet, five, six feet higher than the street. Uh, as far as elevation wise, I'm talking about. Yeah, so as so far as way 35 foot ease, the building would be probably in Cynthia yeah, 50 feet high when it's all completed off the street. That's what I'm concerned about. Yeah, so I don't, you know, obviously we'll have to look in grading as we go a little bit deeper. I obviously would be cutting, so I don't believe the building, the building, the ground level will be probably closer to what the sidewalk and street would be, and that's how ultimately how we build it into that hill. So we would be working with the topography, not necessarily going with what, what is existing right now, but 
that's obviously as we once we design a building and get a better layout. I do believe that it would be a little bit closer um, to to sidewalk level, uh, level with sidewalk, so it'd be similar to the other buildings on Main Street. Um, the setbacks in that area is, I believe it's. Five in the front. Okay. Five in the front. Ten on the sides. Yes. Fifteen in the back. And we're showing right now, you know, maybe it would be 10 feet, uh, 15, 10, 15 feet off that front setback. So we're not trying to keep it as close as we possibly could. We want to have some landscaping, some green space, um, but definitely shifting, shifting the building and flip flopping things. You know, that's really good conversation uh, and direction that would really definitely uh, would internalize. Another concern I have that people living there are, are not high income. Will you be going to the county farm? You know, ultimately. Wait, what was the question? He's asking if the people that are living at the Lincoln Hotel. They're not of high income. They couldn't afford place there. That's nothing to do with it now. No, but I'm just saying, in the long term, we have not, town has not even looked at any of the parameters the uh, downtown committee put in over the years. It's been ignoring them completely. Stay on this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When the building's done, the oh, I'm losing you. So the, the fourth floor would actually be in the attic space. So depending upon what type of roof structure, whether we will go with gable or we, um, a mansard roof, depending upon what we actually end up doing, if I had to guess, Will probably be forty five to to fifty feet. So there would be no fourth floor then. There would be a fourth floor. The fourth floor will be within the roof system. Well, if it goes up the fourth floor, the average space between floors is usually ten feet. So thirty five plus four is forty five. That's been on the peak. You're talking about fifty feet at the peak. So we might not necessarily have a peak. So. If you do mansard roof, it might actually be a flat roof up there. So it, it goes up and then flattens out, and then you can have mechanicals up there. So it's not like a tra traditional A frame house. It's also you're going to have to show what garbage disposal is going to be. Yes, no removal. I'm sorry. He's a dip. Yeah. Yeah. We do have a, a proposed location. Um, I'm not against your billion. Yeah. But what I just really hate having the whole Main Street look like one big solid wall and one into the other. The town's been losing their entire identity, but people come in from out of town. I'm not saying you're a carpet bagger, but a lot of people have been carpet bagging this town it's still going on. I'm not saying you are, Chris, don't get yeah, me wrong. Sure. No, why are you hey, Joe, why are you bringing that up? I, I'm sorry, I I got a problem with that, Mr. Chairman. Joe, you, you know, you're calling the applicant insinuating well, that he's a carpet bagger, Joe. Okay, I don't I think that's appropriate. That. Paul okay. agrees. I apologize for that, but I'm just totally. Thank you. Yeah, I'm totally, totally against that one solid wall down Main Street. Okay. You know, I, one thing with our design, that. we we really don't have any design. We have put zero, very little thought into actual building design. It will not be a square box here, so it's not going to look like a hotel. We're just doing that for conceptual ideas. We, I want, I have a desire to have this building be a good representation of our business and our businesses were, were higher end builders and it to, to look and feel as a, a, a beautiful building that it, that belongs here. And there's a lot, lot of work that we need to do to get there, but I don't want it to just look like a wall. I want it to look more like a little <clears> bit <throat> of village and a look in the fields so that um, it can complement a lot of the the wonderful stuff that's going to be happening in the town of Lincoln. You know, I'm a, I'm a resident here or I have a property here. We spend a lot of time. So haven't been here a, a long, long time, but you know, I, we love the town. We enjoy the town and I, I wanted it to be a positive influence to the change of on main street than, than just, you know, what's going to be the easiest and fastest and cheapest building to build. You know, I want to be proud. We're going to be proud with what we designed. I'm glad of your concept, okay. but I'm just saying, I say, I just hate to see Lincoln become another Conway. All right, let's, let's Joe Paul has a few questions. Go ahead. Paul. Yeah, I do. Um, and looking at, I will only have a few concerns. One is if you're located close to Main Street and it's it's uh 
I'm gonna be 40 some odd feet tall right at the peak or where I'm concerned about uh, snow and stuff falling off the roof coming onto the sidewalk, the, the main sidewalk. Um, I'm also concerned, I, I, I think it's a great idea. I mean, you're gonna be putting 20 units, you know, that, that people could come here and use. Um, my concern as always is, you know, things like green space, um, that'd be 20 families. I don't know what they're gonna do. Um, putting it that close to the street, I don't know if you can move it back and split the parking halfway in the front and halfway in the back. So, you know, it, I don't know if there'll be children around or something like that. It just seems like it's it, it, it's up close to, it's really close to the main street. And I know you probably want that for, for real estate um, to, to be able to um, sell products and stuff like that. But I'm, I, I just think it's, it, it may be a little bit too close to main street. Um, uh, other than that, I mean, you know, your stormwater protection, your water and sewer, you, you're, you're going to have to go through all of that. Um, I'm not sure if you'll have to do um, DOT because you're not coming on to Main Street. Well, you're you're going to give up those have. curb cuts. Yeah, he, he, he will. Yeah, he will. He'll have to go. He'll have to do that even though he's not coming on to Main Street. Yeah, yeah, with it's really Pete and Highway, you have to. But he's given up those curb cuts. I'm not sure he should have to go to DOT because he's going to he's going to go up he's going to go out onto Church Street. He's not going to come out onto Main Street. They did the same thing, Paul, at the uh, over he, here he, at the hotel. Be yeah, I know, but he, he can go out he can go out Church Street and go up Church Street and go on to Pollard Road. But DOT I mean, has a right seventy feet back from the main highway for curb cuts on the highway. And also, I have to treat them as an abutter. Uh, DOT is all right. Well, I'm just trying to give them a just trying to give them another thought It'll process when he talks to the decision as to how they want to proceed. Yeah, well, yeah, when he talks to DOT, but there's the water, storm water, sewer. Water, so, yeah, I, I don't know if the applicants is is the applicant aware of all of the all of the um things he has to comply with in, in regards to the town as far as doing the water and sewer um requirements. No, this I can't means, remember your name, but are, are you familiar that you'll, you might have to be part of a study as far as um, what your water and sewer consumptions are going to be to see if they'll see if the uh, if the town can handle it? So yeah, you, you would be responsible for building the size, soil capacity study, water capacity study, and and, and there's storm water protection plan storm as well. Plan. All right, I'll put that on the list. Yeah, I mean, I just bring these things up to you so you're you're aware. You. But I think it's a, I think it's a great idea. I mean, I I I, I just when I look at 20, 20 apartments, I think of kids. You know, there might be some kids there too, and I just think that if it's a little close to the road, it may not be. It'd be better if it was set back a little bit. Maybe you could split the parking up. That's all. We'll definitely take a look at that. Um, you know, one issue when you maybe break up the parking, we might actually lose more green space. So sometimes you're better off consolidating things in certain areas and getting more green space in one area. So we 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 have a good amount of snow storage in the back. It's also that gives some about you know a little bit more relief to the to the rear of butter. So we're not right up against that property line. But we definitely can look at um, you know outdoor space. This is so um conceptual at this point, but I, I do right. think that to your point, uh, you know, picnic tables or people being able to hang out is uh, could be a nice nice uh, feature for the people that actually live within the structure. Well, and the other thing that you may want to think about is where your sto snow storage area is in the back. I think there's isn't there some residents that that are about up to that property. So you, as far as, as far as noise and headlights and things like that, you may you may have to put some fencing up in the back or something like that. You might want to consider something to. Try and mitigate noise between where your parking area is and and the um, if if there are some residential abutters right up right up next to it, you know. Yeah, so there's one abutter um, that there's only one abutter behind uh, the parcel. It's off of Church Street. Uh, currently, I don't know where the property line specifically is, but there's very very large old established arborvitaes. So I'd be more inclined to try to keep those well-established arborvitaes, but depending upon if that can't happen, if they have to come out for whatever reason, 
putting a fence up would be um, would definitely be um, on the docket just to separate the two buildings or the, the two parcels in space, headlights, and uh, really be able to contain this parcel to itself. And depending upon the arbor vitaes, and uh, it may be able to put a fence on one side or the other as we kind of dig into where the property line is, where those trees are, definitely something for consideration. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and not only just automobile or vehicle lights that are putting in there, but if you're gonna have any lighting, um, to light the parking lot, how, how that might shine on a butters as well. You might want to have some consideration for that. Those are just some of the questions that I think, you know, <coughs> excuse me, that anybody comes up, uh, any, any butter who comes to the public hearing might, might ask you those questions, I would think. All right, thank you. We'll look into a parking lot, you know, dark sky lights to minimize uh, light pollution, but we'll we'll be able to show that on, on future plans and get some specs yeah. on, some light. And, and, and I think you're, uh, I don't think you want to give up that cool street access because, I, and, and you probably want to talk to the fire chief, but to be able to come through with, with a fire truck, go straight through there might be, might be a benefit more than it would be a hindrance. That's one of the main reasons why we, we put that uh, entrance in there or exit was just for, for, for fire trucks. The radius, as we look at the widths of Coolidge Street, that <laughs> radius may have to be there so they can be able to make that turn, but that's this is just kind of fundamental directional at this point. Does anyone have any? Okay. The um, current parking spaces along Coolidge Street, on this map, it looks like that's on your property. Uh, on the property you're looking at buying? It, it's not. The tax map is just incorrect. Okay. So that what they've done is they, we've just overlaid the tax map Got it. just for simplification. Okay. That's um, right. That parking is, in fact, owned by the bank next door, where it was part of a, there was a residential house, and then they extended Coolidge Street to connect to Main Street, whatever it was. And that house went away, and then they built the bank or... So those those spaces are owned by the bank. So the existing wall that's there is roughly the property line, uh, but we'll find that out as we do the full boundary survey. Okay. Okay. All right. So so you're not including that then in your calculation of open space or any of that? Yeah, it's completely excluded. Okay. So that was that was my question. The the other thing, um, to me, it looks like the the proposed building. And again, I know this is just a, a sketch. Um, but it looks like it's actually further from the, the road than the building on the left and about equal to the distance from the road as the, the building on the right. Um, so you're not, you're not building that any closer than, than the two existing buildings that are there right now. <clears throat> with, with, with that being said, two points. One is what, what Paul mentioned about the snow coming off. Um, obviously the bigger the, the roof, structure the more snow was gonna yep, sure. fall yep. off that would be an interference if it if it landed um if there wasn't enough room to store some snow between the building and, and the sidewalk um you know and then my second comment is um i guess my memory is different than joe's because when when that um downtown committee existed several decades ago um it, it was things like the j and j plaza that kind of inspired them from my memory to want the buildings up closer to the road and hide the parking out back, um, kind of to have a more um, downtown walkable feel. I, I don't think this town will ever have that walkable feel like North Woodstock because we have a high school field along one side and a, and a shopping center along the other and that doesn't create that walking. Further down that way it does, but that's because the buildings are closer together and, and closer to the street. Um, but, you know, I, I remember it different and I think this, this fits in, you know, to slide the building all the way to the back and put, put you know, a whole bunch of asphalt in the front. I don't think that's any more attractive than, than a building. I agree with my, you. My personal opinion. Um, and, and again, going back to what Paul said, I think the, just the, the idea that you're gonna transform this property into 20, long-term rentable units is a great step in, in, in accomplishing what this town needs and what is um, uh, in our master plan. 
the need for, for long term housing. Okay. Hey, Warren. Steve. You think the state will make them capture their rainwater, the runoff, like they did at the hotel down there? No, they wouldn't uh, have anything go out on the I mean, you probably won't be able to use the state's storm drain if that's what you're asking. Okay. You'll have to. You'll have to keep it on site. That could get expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a big, it's a big building, so. Yeah, I, I think that um, it might behoove you to have um, some discussion with the DOT about those two things: the drainage, um, you know, with the Correct. chances are of having use of their drainage system, which I don't think is. I don't think they'll say yes, but you know, you should ask. Should talk. And then the, the traffic issue for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did have preliminary conversations with DOT just as far as um, the curb cuts, whether they were um, authorized or they had permits on them. But, but it was one of those things, it's once they're they're existing, it goes back so far they couldn't find anything, but then it only goes back. 25 years probably in their records without really digging. But for the most part, they said once they're there, they're there, we'll we'll grant it. But I just think overall, as far as the site management, we've looked at a lot of concepts of putting buildings, multiple buildings. Um, and we just went back to one building, parking in the back, no curb cuts. It just seemed like a better flow, better layout, maximizing the parcels um, to its best potential. Um, <clears throat> I'll reach back out to DOT and talk about those discussion points. Okay. Does anyone have anything else, Joe? I apologize I come on strong before, but I guess it, my concern is having a big long wall going down the street. It's like a tunnel thing. If you know the wind comes off the tank, comes off there tremendously high velocity and volume, the more, more of a tunnel effect you get, create the more wind is going blowing right downtown, just like a tornado. Secondly, and your curb cut coming in onto uh, Third Street, as you proposed, how much is that tread right there to the road probably is 30 or 32 feet wide. The amount of traffic you'd be generating is pretty much, I would like to see how many cars come in and out the way they can handle it. Also, the fire station is just up the hill. I want to make sure there's no hindrance to the fire station coming out. And a Saturday night, that street is mobbed because of the church. Mm -hmm. I'm not just telling you what some of these look for. But my big concern is having a great big tall building on Main Street, like a big tunnel effect going right down. We need the apartments. But with every year bit of progress, there's always a little bit of regress in the town. That's it. I'm one of the few natives left in town. So Two of us on the board here that are. Now I'm older than Steve, so I see more changes going on. He's the mayor. I'm not saying Jay, OJ's been here long enough. He, he's almost a resident, a permanent. But I agree a lot of stuff OJ said. But when you just destroy all the old stuff to make it new, the town becomes another type of the atmosphere of the whole town changes. When you have a town with good parts and bad parts, that makes the ambiance of the town. You know what I'm trying to say? The same thing happened in Laconia when they did the urban re revitalization in downtown Laconia. Did away with all the old buildings. Everything in town went bankrupt and closed in about 20 years. Now they're trying to be now they're trying to bring it back to look like it was originally. <laughs> but that'll never happen again. Of course, I won't say Main Street Lincoln has always been a, well, it's a beautiful place, but if you lived all your life, you might think of it different. Well, it definitely has a lot of charm. I mean, I've been coming up here as a young kid, and um, it is beautiful. It, it, it is a young funny. kid. What are you talking about? <laughs> when I was really young. Uh, but, you know, that's why, you know, I look forward to it. As we, as we dive into the design, well, there's going to be a lot of emphasis on not, you know, building something that's going to be an asset or be a look correct and look like it. You know, I'm not saying it maybe it look like it was there forever, but something that looks like it fits the community, fits the town, fits the location. So there's gonna be a, we're gonna have a lot of um, consideration with that. So it's not gonna be looking like the hotel that's 
they build it down the street where it's a square box and that's what it is. It's a hotel. That's not what we want to do here. We want to have it so as you're driving down, it always may look like it's always been there before. But as far as traffic studies, we can look at the traffic studies and car counts. That's all pretty straight, straightforward stuff that we can definitely look into doing. There's one other thing. You can have commercial space. Did you factor in that the Hawaii the Park and the commercial space are different than those for apartments? That's correct. Okay. So it's uh, off the top of my head, I believe it's one space for every 300 square feet of um, public space. Yeah. Right. right. And then for Employee. 10 parking spaces, um, one additional space for employees. So there's, I, I didn't calculate. Carol, could you please speak up? I can, I'm can. i having a hard time hearing you. I think it's because you're so far from the mic. Oh. No, I was just talking about the um, the parking spaces that you need for, you distracted me. <laughs> I can't remember. For, for the, the retail. retail. The, the retail is the 300 square feet of public area. So if you have storage area, you don't have to have a parking space for it. Like 300 square feet of storage area. Um, but then the uh, then for every 10 parking spaces, you need one additional parking space for employees. Um, so if you had 20 parking spaces, you would need two additional. So I have, based on the breakout, uh, one's retail space, uh, I've allocated four parking spaces because it's 1,200 square feet. Uh, and then the office space, which is my business companies, it's three parking spaces. It's, uh, I don't even know if anybody would be working it, but we did it based, still based on the 300 square feet for one space. So I have a total of seven spaces. So that would fall under the 10. So you need one more space. So one more space yeah. for the for the employee. Okay. There's one other thing you have to look into. Concept decides you left have to have a handicap parking. The handicap parking place is a much bigger than the standard parking place. You just want to keep that. Yeah, and then you have to have that loading zones and all that kind of stuff. So we haven't got there yet. So we may end up losing spaces, but that's also when we do the actual, because this is just tax map. Once yeah. we actually get the boundary, this parcel based on the tax map could get smaller. And mm -hmm. we could be talking something, you know, reducing things, or it could also get larger, or maybe it's spot on. Yeah. Um, but things are going to adjust. I'm sure what we look at today is not what we'll, we'll be looking at in the future. Mm -hmm. It's just conceptual type conceptual of step in the you know the first step forward. Well, my concern has always been you look at the new hotel coming in at 35 feet of primary eaves. That building's tall. If that's a main street, that's going to be super among its tall. Yeah. Anyone else have anything, Carol? Um, I think you yep. should. Jim, I do. Okay. Oh. Well, go ahead. Sure. Well, I just want you to uh, make sure you reread um, page 22 of the land use plan ordinance about the residential parking spaces because um, for residential um, units, there are two spaces for each residential unit for the first three bedrooms, and then one additional. Each additional two bedrooms, and you don't have any apartments that are greater than that. But I think on your sheet, you have um, parking spaces uh, slightly less for like a, a studio and a one bedroom. So I, I did. So that would be one question I'd have from the board. So uh, under the zoning, I believe I read that uh, within the village district, uh, the board is allowed to make uh, re relax parking requirements. Uh, based on what the zoning is. So it, it gives you guys some flexibility. What we ended up doing, or the way I've calculated it, uh, or, or proposing or asking for, is the three-bedroom and two-bedroom units would be at the two spaces as shown in the, um, in the regulations. The one-bedroom in the studio would be at 1.25 spaces per unit, which would fall under the zoning for rooming house, boarding house, or hotel room, because it, it's a it's more in line with one of those uh, type of units. So I calculated the one bedrooms in the studios at that lower rate. We can't give you an answer on that tonight. Yeah. One thing, we showed two garages in here. 
You want to be out of motor garage or just storage? It's just storage. Okay, Paul, you have another question? Yeah, I just wanted to <clears throat> comment that um, the town currently uses a snow blower to, to blow the snow off the sidewalks. Um, and, and what, you know, when you build your building closer to the, to the main street, it might, it might not be a great idea to be that close because it'll, you know, your walkways, by the looks of it, your, your walkways are coming out of the front. And, and, and the other comment I was going to make was that, you know, landscaping goes a long way to, to reduce some of the visual impacts of a, of a taller building. So you could, you know, landscaping wise, you could do a lot to, to, to make it look good within the town, I think. I agree. So we'll definitely look at that green space within the building, get that good separation, snow storage. Um, definitely things that we'll be looking at at phase two. I, also, have, have you had any conversations with the fire chief or talked to him or showed him any of this? So, yes, I, I've talked to, to Ron uh, about this project. Uh, he hasn't seen these concepts, um, but, you know, he has uh, at least information that he knows that what I'm looking to do. Steve, do you have another question? Mm -hmm. I'm all set. Thanks, Jim. All right. Thank you. Great. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Look forward to following back, Doc. By the way, I want to have to use the concept that's totally against it. I'm not. But <laughs> it's been here all my life. I don't like to see changes dramatically. I'm an old, okay. an old diehard. But uh, unfortunately, when you see a building as tall as the one down and by past the uh, the bank down here, you're right across the street on an elevation. That should be a very high building. No, I respect that, and uh, I love your passion for the town. So we'll definitely see what we can do to work on the design, and so it fits in quite well. Great. Thank you. Another one: conceptual seeking advice. Blue so, Mountain. The existing Verizon Wireless cell tower was erected in 2015, 2016. Yes, Asperilla carpet lift at the Loon Mountain Ski Resort on F-126, lot 20. The existing Verizon cell tower does not have adequate capacity to handle all to handle the cell phone and data traffic at the Loon Mountain Ski Area during the 2022-2023 ski season between now and mid-April. For this reason, Verizon Wireless is contemplating using a cell on wheel COW during the ski season. The COW is a temporary cell site operated from a truck. The COW will provide supplemental V2, V2W coverage for the gondola side of the Loon Mountain Resort. The COW is often used for large, large events like concerts and the Super Bowl, when existing local cell service would be overwhelmed by the demands associated with the event. The proposed plan would be to park the Verizon COW behind the rock climbing wall at Loon Mountain Adventure Center's climbing wall and leave it there until the end of ski seasons, which they estimate would be around mid-April. Then the COW would be removed. The climbing wall is located on other land owned by Lynn Mountain Recreation <clears throat> Corporation, map 126, lot one. This is a temporary cell tower. The use of a temporary cell tower is not addressed in the Lincoln Land Use Plan ordinance. Who's here for this? Um, I Chip. Chip is here. Yeah. Uh, Chip is in here by Zoom. Chip, okay. Zoom. Good evening, folks. How are you? <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Carol, did you want to did you want to say anything? Would you like me to just give a brief overview? Oh no, go ahead. Yeah. The overview. Okay, sure, sure. Uh, uh, Carol's summary of our uh, of our project here uh, was spot on. Um, we call it a cow, uh, the cell on wheels, and and yes, we uh, at Verizon Wireless and many other carriers. Um, uh, have a fleet of temporary cell sites. They're uh, single axle uh, trucks, the size of a delivery truck. Um, and all of the, they're essentially a, a, a mobile site on wheels. Um, we use them at the Deerfield Fair, the Freiburg Fair, uh, sporting events that, that, that are overwhelming, overwhelmingly large um, concerts. Uh, and then in instances like this, where um, it's, it's a last minute deployment, um, where we know that the existing site isn't going to be able to uh, provide enough coverage or capacity, I should say, the word is capacity in our world, uh, will deploy a cow um, in the vicinity of this area 
to supplement the coverage uh, that we have there today. Uh, it's not a long-term plan. Uh, again, it would be uh, deploying it uh, as soon as we could, with barring uh, landlord or Moon Mountain approval um, through the end of their ski season. We'd set it up, uh, turn it on, connects to power and fiber. Um, we would tear it down after the ski season was over uh, because frankly, during the summer months, it's as you folks well know, uh, it's not as busy at the mountain as it is during the winter. So uh, it's a Band-Aid and I don't have any sense for a permanent solution yet, but whatever that might be, I'll certainly talk to Carol first and be back in front of you for that. So uh, ha happy to answer any questions. Okay. How tall is it? The cow itself, it's a good question. So the cow has a telescoping pole on it. Um, and we've got, bear with me. I apologize. We have a number of different models of cows. We have some trailer <clears throat> cows, but in this instance here, again, this would be that single axle truck. Um, the unique thing about this configuration, about this deployment, is that we wouldn't use the telescoping pole. Instead, they're proposing to attach the antennas to one of the wooden support poles of the climbing wall structure. So we're looking to use, I think, four small antennas mounted to one singular pipe, which would be attached to the wooden pole. Uh, and then uh, we would never use a telescoping pole uh, that's affixed to the truck. Um, when we do use that pole, it can go up to about 40 or 45 feet on this particular truck. Um, the antennas themselves on the rock climbing wall uh, will be about that height. So uh, to use the telescoping pole in the location that Loon is, is giving us uh, probably wouldn't work anyway because the climbing wall is a bit taller. So, um, it, it, not to mention that at that height, the telescoping pole would need to be guy wired off for stability. Um, the uh, rock climbing structure is uh, amply suitable for antenna attachment. How 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 much above the rock climbing wall will it, will the antenna be, or, or will it be uh, any above? The no, good good question. So uh, no more than five. The bottom of the antenna might be three or four feet above the wooden pole itself. So j j just just above it. This, Mr. Chairman, uh, I didn't have a whole lot of time to review this because we didn't get our, I didn't get my packet till the other day. Um, but when I previewed our telecommun telecommunications um, conditions, it, it talks about <clears throat> including uh, specialized mobile radio communications or SMRs as part of our ordinance and that, and, you know, they, they require certain things. I'm not sure if having a um, mobile, mobile, uh, specialized mobile radio communications facility would require um, what would would require because our, our ordinance does deal with it. Um, I have to read it a little further to to be able to see what it is, but um, I think we're probably going to look at it because it is it, it is addressed in our. It is addressed in our ordinance, I, and I, like I said, I didn't have enough time to really take a look at it to see exactly what it is. But um, it, it does say somewhere in here something about having to have um, site plan and review and things like that. Okay, Chip, is this like are you just using this? Looking to use this just one season, or is this going to be ongoing? No, yeah, so that ju just this one season and, and, um, and, and to your point, I'm, I'm looking at the zoning ordinance on my other computer, on the other screen here, sorry. I, I'm, you have my full attention. I've got two, two laptops open here. Um, I just wanted to look at the SMR reference because the specialized mobile radio, um, what, what, what page are you on there in the ordinance there, looking at that, Paul? Um, the SMR part, like I said, was on, and I haven't read, I mean, I, I, like I said, I didn't get down all the way through it. That's all right. Um, yep. It's on page 53, I think. All right. All right. Underneath telecommunications facility. All right. Let's see. Okay. And like I said, I think the ordinance did did address those things. Ah, I'm not okay. sure to what okay. extent. I know that they're, they say that somewhere in there, and, and again, would have to research it, but something about site plan review, and and then there was something in there about a another requirement as well. And yeah. as you said, I'm not sure if it 
dealt with something that was more of a permanent position, but a a uh, specialized mobile radio thing typically would not be a permanent solution. I would think that a specialized mobile radio communications vehicle would be temporary no matter where it was. I don't think you would intend to leave that there for a long period of time. That's well, correct. I have no problems with it. I, I, I'm just saying that I think we got to look at our ordinance because I think it does address it. And I think we just need to see. I'd have that, to. Oh. That, yeah, okay. Paul, that term, that SMR term. Um, uh, now, again, I, um, I, I've seen that term before. It's an old term um, and it's akin to personal communication service PCS. In other words, SMR, PCS, um, are types of frequency bands. Um, I don't think it refers to the uh, the temporary structure, but instead somewhere SMR. In here, yep. Also somewhere Especially. in here, it talks about mobile communication, telecommunications things too. I'm not, like I said, I, sure. had, I didn't have a whole lot of time to go through this, but somewhere in here, it, I mean, I, I would just go, yeah, I think that I think um, in, in that in that section um, uh, sub section B of the definitions uh, number eight telecom facility subsection A again that SMR uh, is akin to a technology that is no longer used or it's a generalized term. Um, certainly PCS is we, we we still have a PCS license. We've got LTE license. We've got cellular license. Um, I'm not going to bore you with that stuff, but. Uh, that that is, I believe, the intention here in the definition of SMR being a specialized mobile radio communications. It's not referring to the uh, the the truck itself. If that if that helps. Somewhere in here it says something about that, and I'm just. Um... I wish it did. <laughs> it would make our lives easier right now. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, but let me, let me, let me say this. Uh, I've been doing this over 20 years now, and it's very, very rare that a municipality would address um, uh, temporary deployment of cell sites. Uh, and in, in those instances, we, we lean on definitions of um, temporary structure uh, for guidance on how to permit it. Hang on. So I'm looking at page 57, 1B, site plan review slash permit applications. Yep. All persons seeking to construct or install a wireless communications facility, unless expressly exempted by this article, shall apply to the planning board for site plan review in accordance with site plan review regulations. In addition, applications which are required to obtain a conditional use permit shall there submit the application required by this action. Yep. And if you look, if you look at page fifty-three under telecommunications facility, um, yep. wireless telecommunications facilities such as a structure, antenna tower, or other device which provides commercial mobile wireless service. So does that mean that that it's just it's talking about the mobile wireless service and not anything that's on mobile? Yeah, I think the word mobile there refers to the fact that it's mobile communications. It's wireless. It, that, right. That's what they used to call it. You know, back in the late nineties. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know somewhere in here it said something about mobile devices. Maybe that might have been it. But I know it also said what Jimmy said too. So I. Anyway, can I ask you why? I mean, so so this cell tower that's at Loom currently, yep. is that already maxed out? It is it that, was I mean, last so it, it, it was last years. winter yeah during the summer it performed okay but during the winter time last year it suffered badly and there's there was a lot performance drop calls drop missed data transmissions that kind of thing um and is so that it was the height of the tower or no not at all no there's too many people too many people trying to connect to Facebook <laughs> that's <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I'm not that guy, but a lot of people like to do it. So it's it's the data and the streaming that are killing uh, killing. It's it, it's the each each sector of antennas can only handle so much load, and then you've got the backhaul limitations of the fiber. Believe it or not, that it can only backhaul so much data at one time. Um, it, it's overloaded. Um, if I'm not mistaken, and Carol, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but well, U.S. Cellular has had a macro 
and tennis site at the gondola house for 20 plus years, right? They're, they're in the flagpole. Yep. Um, and, and when we were looking for a site with Rick Kelly way back when, you Verizon Wireless that is, um, there was really no space on the gondola side. So we were forced to go over to the, over to the quad side. And that's when we ended up building that monopole. I think since then, Carol, I think US Cell actually attached its antennas to the monopole that, we're, that we built as well. In other words, I think they have two macro sites because they were suffering some of the same uh, uh, capacity issues that, that Verizon is seeing now. Whatever um, they did, it didn't require them to come back to the planning board. It was just yeah. a matter of um, adding things interior and within the, within the fenced-in area. Um, sure, sure. So I guess my, my question to you, Chip, is that what you're telling me is there's no way to be able to upgrade the, the current equipment that you have there to be able to meet the, the requirements that you have to that you have to install this mobile thing and that's that's yeah. the only fix that there is yeah paul it's an excellent question so uh, I'll, I'll play an open hand here a little bit with you about about a month and a half ago um we, we received an email from um, way way up in the chain at verizon wireless in new jersey and they said um, it sounds like your region, in your region, there's what, four or five ski areas that are suffering, or that did suffer last year. And uh, uh, let's see, they were Mount Snow, Sunday River, Loon, uh, and Stratton. I'm sorry, those four. I'm sorry, and Bretton Woods, that was the fifth one. And of those five projects, I received four of them. Of the four, Mount Snow, Bretton Woods, Sunday River, and Loon, um, my system performance engineer was in fact able to um, optimize equipment at Bretton Woods in a Sunny River, thereby uh, prohibiting the need for a cow. They didn't. So, in other words, I'm down to working with um, Dave Moulton at Mount Snow and, of course, Brian here at Loon um, because we were able to modify what we had out there. At Loon and at Mount Snow, we can't. There's nothing more that we can do to the existing tower sites at either mountain. Um, and hence, we need to spend the money to, to deploy uh, these cows. Uh, it's not, um, the benefit is really for the subscribers out at Loon. It's, uh, it's not Verizon. It's 100% it's, it's, uh, it's 100 100 expense. Um, and what it, unfortunately, what it does is once you set it up and you leave it there, um, it no longer becomes available for emergency situations elsewhere, uh, which could pop up from time to time. So we're losing two out of the I think two out of the five or six we have in the fleet, um, at least for for the winter. So, so I guess so. I guess my point is to Jimmy's question is that this really is more of a permanent solution because you're always going to have this problem during the winter, right? I mean, you you can't correct what's there, or, or you can't add on or fix or whatever to what's there at the tower. So, I mean, every winter you're going to have to put this this cow there. No, no, that's not 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 true. Um, we will need a more a more permanent solution. A, the permanent solution is not to bring the cow out every year, uh, and in fact, that's um, we, that's not that's not uh, it's not a sustainable solution for us. It's a band aid for this winter, um, and as I mentioned earlier, whatever they decide to do to supplement coverage on a more permanent so for a more permanent solution, um, we would come back in front of you because it would be a permanent cell site, whether it's a small cell on a pole or 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 a traditional macro sites. Like US Cell has at, at the Gondola Lodge. Um, we just don't have the time right now to work through that process because that would take a year. Uh, we've missed the winter. So, um, again, this would be parked and operational until about mid April. Uh, I, I don't know. Ski season ends usually early April. So, once things have quieted down, we pull it out of there uh, and it's got a schedule to meet next spring anyway. So, it won't be there longer than that. How much construction is involved in setting this up? I mean, is it just a matter of driving it to the site and parking it? It's it's uh, because we're not using the telescoping pole. We don't need to guy off the pole for uh, for um, for the antennas. Uh, it really is a matter of driving to the site, parking it. Um, we need to connect uh, single phase 200 amp service to it, and we need to connect fiber to it. Uh, that's all done in the radio compartment room on the back of the truck. Um, you park it, we leave it there. There's nothing, there's nothing to do. There's no excavation. Um, yeah, all the infrastructure is there for us. So. Okay. 
in which a time frame I haven't installed. <laughs> they, uh, like everything in Wirehouse is as soon as possible. <laughs> um, realistically, um, I'm, depending on how things go here with you folks, I need to report back to both Verizon tonight as well as Brian Norton, up the, G, the GM up at the mountain. Um, I need to work through a lease agreement or a license agreement with Brian and Loon Mountain Recreation Corp uh, to finalize permission to deploy it in this location. Uh, and then once we have our regulatory approval, which is FCC, FAA, uh, which we have to do in every site, no matter how low or how high, um, realistically, I think we'd be doing good to get it out there just after the new year. January? If we, got it, if we, if we had it deployed on air in a month, I think we'd be doing pretty good. So it's too bad. It's too bad we're going to, I shouldn't. I shouldn't say that. I know that they're trying like heck to have it out there for the holiday season, but I, I just, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't see it happening right now. Paul. Well, yeah. I, I, again, I have no problem with them putting it there personally, but I just want to make sure that, <clears throat> that as you said, our or in our ordinance somewhere that it's not covered, that it has to come in for site plan review or something else, because if we allow it and our ordinance does cover it, I think then, then, then we're, we've, we, we need to take a look at that. I mean, if it, and, and I'm sure it's ship, if he has to file something or loan, that they would probably want to do it right away. Sounds like to get it done. But yeah. um, what page is that you looked at, Jimmy? I'm sorry, I didn't. I 50, found it earlier, but I, it's I was 50, 50, 77. 77? 50, 57. 57? Yeah. And whereabouts on there were you? The, and 1B. One, one at the top of the page. 1B. 1B. Yeah, site plan review permit application um, heading there. Yeah, I, 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 we're not constructing or installing, we're, we're parking it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, 1B. I wish I could share my screen with you. I could, I'd show you a picture of one. Um, I'm still not finding it. It's not a permanent structure, right? Well, I think yeah. they have a, have a picture of one in your Yeah, I saw it. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. The, the, I think the picture I shared with uh, Carol was one that we did. Um, it's the cow at uh, on Commercial Street in Manchester in support of the Chaos and Kindness concert, the free concert that the city put on at Arms Park. Um, the fire chief there called us somewhat last minute. It was about two, three weeks before the event and said, holy smokes, you know, um we need verizon support or uh, so he was he was uh invaluable in helping us find that location along commercial street to park that and in that picture there you'll see the telescoping pole is raised and the mast is raised and we've got our antennas uh, attached to it and in that in that instance we powered the cow with a portable generator um, again, the event was only one day, so um, it was a very, very much a temporary solution like it is here. But in this instance here, we wouldn't be using the generator. We'd be connecting to Loon's house power. So, the, um, so I mean, it doesn't seem like it, it doesn't seem like it would be, be a big deal to, if required, to um, conditional use permit or a site plan review application to do that because Chip said he's going to, not going to be doing it till January, installing it. So, how, how long would it take to have that to actually do that? Well, if I had a complete application, it takes a month to turn it around because yeah. I have to do notice. It has to be uh, ten days clear notice, uh, published in the paper, um, notice to abutters. It's. Uh, I mean, it's only going to be one one season. It's only Correct. one season. Well, no, I understand that, but our, our ordinance is, any, uh, is an ordinance. Well, if you look at the what we require of a site plan review, it's not really right. triggering anything. And those use well, an yeah. there, there would be a, there would be a there'd be a whole lot of NAs next to the typical requirements for site plan. Right. Yeah, I guess I, I guess we might be able to take a look at it and say that. That it does not need to meet the permit 
because it's not it's not uh, it's a, addressed it's a, in our ordinance might be or, one way to take a look at because because there is no but we'd want to take a thorough look at our ordinance to make sure that mobile cell towers are not definitely part yeah. of it i mean like i said i i didn't review it but i i would think maybe one way out of it not out of it but one way to get it moving is that if we find out that our ordinance does not address mobile things and then it would not need a permit which would mean that they wouldn't have to do the site plan review application or the um conditional use permit but i mean that that would be okay yeah i guess from again from what i've read in the ordinance that there's nothing in there that does require what's basically a a site plan review for a truck um, it's it, it's a it's a temporary thing. It's a vehicle. If this were any other type of vehicle, we wouldn't even be talking about it. Okay, it's because we're calling it a a mobile cell phone tower that we're trying to stick it into a category of cell phone towers. It's it's a truck. Um, I think Chip is right that that if we did require him to to come before the board with a with a site plan review application, it's going to be a whole bunch of NAs. I mean, there's there's no setbacks. There's, there's no lighting, there's no traffic, there's no, I, I just don't even know what we'd be looking at or questioning. Um, they're parking it behind a big solid wall of wood that you're not going to even see the truck. I, well, I don't I, think it's going to be behind it, is it, Chip? It is, yeah. So um, if, if, if you're intimately familiar with that little adventure center area down there, you get the climbing wall and then behind it, uh, there's a grassy area because off to the diagonal corner of it, you've got the start of the newer um, zip line that goes across the East Branch there. So uh, there's an alcove back there where Brian says, "Hey, why don't you park it back here?" Um, and they're going to plow snow. They'll, they'll pl it will be plowed in for the winter, <laughs> uh, which is okay. Um, but yeah, you um, as they were saying, you won't see you won't see the truck from from um, from the from Blue Mountain Road there. Well, um, I guess if you were looking closely driving along the Kang, if you went past the entrance you, and you looked over across the river, you might see it, but you're looking at a mountain full of uh, industry and, and commercialization anyhow there. Yeah. Okay, so. Carol. Well, what occurs to me to look for guidance to something else is when people uh, want to park a camper, as long as they're, it's still a registered vehicle, we don't treat it as a building. We don't treat it um, as a uh, as anything other than a registered vehicle, even though it, it's a camper. Um, so, I, I mean, I was just looking to other parts of our ordinance that might offer some guidance to how to deal with. Chip, is there any signage on the the cow? No, no. Well, I say that there's there's Verizon Wireless's logo on the on the driver door. Um, the passenger door there, but that's it. Nothing on the truck. Nothing on the uh, the box itself. Right. Right. No, it's pretty obscure. Okay. Not like they're selling snow cones or cotton candy. It's something to eat. Yeah. You know, it is a truck. With I mean, I haven't seen any harm. You know, letting it let it go without any site plan review this this one season. Myself. I agree with you. I agree with you. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm fine with it. Okay. All right. And another concept to think about. If the cell tower is in place, it's an emergency. If the mountain, it's an emergency call to have it there to help the people. Yeah. The plus. It's a problem if there's no cell service. All right. Yeah. So that, I think the opinion of the board is it can go in without any. Okay. Sense. Okay. I appreciate that. Yeah. So, you know, in, and, and to your to your point about um, E911, uh, there's been a, a number of occasions over the years um, that I've been with Verizon Wireless where um, either the Maine or the New Hampshire State Police have called us because they've been searching for somebody um, in the North Country where there was no service, and we deployed in a moment's notice um, and had it set up for however long it took the FBI or State Police to to locate that individual, and uh, they, they are invaluable that way so it's not just uh i, I didn't mean to um uh, make light heart of the facebook comment earlier um uh, but there is an e911 component to it a value to it um and, and thank you for pointing that out mr chairman 
All right. Any other questions, Chip? No, thank you. I, I appreciate it, folks. I appreciate your time and short notice, too. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Pull the board on it. Chip? Yeah. I didn't want to do that. I wouldn't. Okay. Well, All right. Have fun. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Always do. Thank you. <laughs> um, few changes to Lincoln's flood floodplain development ordinance and site plan review regulations identified by New Hampshire State Planning and Development on September 16, 2022, of Lincoln's floodplain regulations. Proposed changes to be adopted at the annual 2023 March town meeting are necessary for, for the town of Lincoln to comply with the requirements of the National Flood Insurance Program. Okay, when she, um, the woman who's, who sent me this material um, said it's basically they changed the term of art um, that they use for uh, floodplain, like the name of the flood hazard boundary maps is now called uh, the flood insurance rate maps. Um, and then, Anyway, it, you'll see that I've highlighted uh, everything that's, well, you can see what each game the red, red ink and the yellow highlight. Just a question, Carl. Did the this, this state said that they went through our town ordinance? Right. So all of these red cross outs and yellow highlights are from the state looking at our particular right. ordinance. And they must have done this for every town that has flood well, protection. Well, we're one of the, the, the few towns in New Hampshire that have a levy. And so we are part of the group of towns um, that all the rest of New Hampshire got updated in 2008. Um, okay. The towns that had levies after Katrina um, did not get updated, they got set aside. And then, um, so this is this is part of updating our our maps, but our maps are still going through the hearing process, which is a very if you remember they described it as a very long protracted process, and you know we're getting along, we're going along in that process, um, and we're much closer now because we have a four year hiatus where nothing happened, um, but this is part of. This is so that when the new maps come, everything will be in place. This will, the ordinance will be correct and the maps will be correct. Hopefully, we'll get them in 2004, beginning of 2004. Does this change any of the flood, floodplain elevations, or does this just identify them and put them on a map? This is just our ordinance. This is just our ordinance. Well, it changes the maps that have reference. So right. in that regard, the elevations could have may have may not or may not have changed. But this also maybe it does. Does this also change like um, the availability of floodplain insurance and where it might be available to certain people in certain sectors or it, well, in order for us to, to stay in the program, we have to do this. So um, this is this is part of our requirements to, to stay, to allow our townspeople to get the federally subsidized flood insurance. If we don't make these changes, then we can't be part of the program. No one in town can get flood insurance. Right. Through, through the federal program. Right. Through the feds. They can right. get flood insurance on their own. Right. Mm -hmm. Is there any, Carol, is, is there any downside to, to doing this? I mean, does it um, does it hurt to does it hurt know? the town in any way or hurt people that are along uh floodplain corridors or anything like that? No. Well, the only thing I see substantial improvement, you know, if you 50% of the market value will render some buildings functionally obsolete. 
Well, possibly. That's always been there. Well, we didn't have it in there before. Yeah, well, it was part of what we had to consider. Like if, when, uh, when the people were looking to buy the um, Longhorn. Longhorn. Right. Um, one of the obstacles was that they could only increase the value by 50%. Um, and that wasn't going to enable them to do what they were looking to do, like make apartment building out of it and all these other um, project, you know, projects that people were suggesting when they were looking at that property to buy. Um, how how about along the levy at OJR? Go ahead, I'm sorry. I say FEMA is updating the floodplain maps Correct. with or without us. Um, so it's those new maps that are going to determine what's the base flood Elevation. level, whatever they're calling it now. Um, and, you know, the, the 60 or 90 day comment period, I believe we're still in. Is that correct, Carol? For those maps? I'm thinking we're at the end of that period. Okay, well, it's, it's not it's, over, it's almost over. Okay, so it's, it was, we're getting to the end of it, but we're still in the middle of that comment period. Um, you know, I, I've been sent the maps and looked at them, but I mean, I, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a flood expert. They're, they're, it's what, what a whole bunch of engineers have determined is, is the base level and the flood zones and all of that. So it's kind of, it is what it is. They're not going to, you know, if, if some engineer comes forward and, and with, with disputing evidence, that's one thing. If someone doesn't like what zone they're in, doesn't matter. The, the map's going to be adopted and, and whatever gets adopted, that's the flood maps that, that's going to control all uh, flood uh, base levels in the state. And again, as Carol said, a lot of them have already been adopted, but these communities that haven't, these would be the new maps. And then so, this is allowing us to participate in that federal program if if we want to. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and insurance. So, I mean, it's just- It's, it's crazy it's, expensive. Yeah. I mean, for all so, I guess my, so I guess my question for, further, OJ, is that, so with all this new building that's happening along the East Branch, where the levee is on both sides of the road and stuff like that. If if the um, the new elevation says that these buildings are going to be in the floodplain, does the town have any recourse or to be able to say, hey, look, you know, we you know we you really shouldn't be building there, or because we put everybody, you know, because it expends a lot of money to be able to take care of people who are in. Uh, flood prone areas and you know life safety and all those things too so i guess i you know and maybe that's not a part of this but maybe i should be asking a different question at a different time but i mean i, I thought it might be germane here that's all are you asking if a previously approved lot is now unbuildable well I'm, I, previously un, previously approved i mean yeah previously approved and maybe not built on but i mean i know we've had we had issues with with the levee where people were building up where people built there and they were the army corps of engineers said they probably shouldn't have done a few things and i mean it, is, is this any part part of that in this consideration or i i, I no. don't believe that this has any effect on previously built places how about Other previously than, approved uh, Previously approved, but not built OJs, but probably where I'm going with it. They want to get, they, they're going to have to comply. If, yeah, if they have to permit. comply. They can build on stilts. They basically have to flood proof the house. They can still build in the flood um, prone areas. Uh, they just have to comply with the building code associated with it. The building code includes a lot of weird stuff like. You know, you can't have any, any mechanicals within the flood flown area, so they have to be higher up. That's why you see all those houses, you know, along the ocean front, you know, that are on yeah. still. They do that at the Cape, yeah. But I guess my, again, my question is for, and Carol, that sounds all well and good because they address the fact that they're 
buildings are up off the <clears throat> above the floodplain. But our emergency staff, as, as we found out when they were trying to get people, um, when the when the South Mount Bridge was about ready, they thought it was going to go out. It's our emergency staff to try and go rescue those people that are sitting there in those places that are are a problem for the town. And I guess, at least as far as I see it, I mean, they can sit in their houses, I guess, in the water and go by, but you know, someone's going to go out there and try and rescue them, risk risk their life to do that. And I didn't know if that was part of this or am I way off here? Or, I don't know. I don't know it's, if there's anything we can do to make it you know do it any differently. This is we want to participate in the flood insurance program. This is what we have to do. Well, the other part of what we have to do is we have to make sure that when somebody comes in for a land use permit, that we make them comply with the federal flood guidelines. And if we don't, then you know, get, the whole town will get kicked out of the program. So, um, so right now, the tax maps that we have, I, at the time, we thought that they were in the process of being adopted and it was going to be done by now. And That's so the maps that we have now show already the proposed um, flood area that's going to be adopted if they if everybody approves it. Um, but when Steve Tower comes in for a client and he says, well, Carol, you've got, you know, you've got the proposed floodplain area, um, but my client wants to build in the in the floodplain as it was approved in 2000, um, and he should be able to do that. Then, basically, Ray and I and and uh, Ryan have the discussion with them about, you know, do you really does your client really want to put the house in there? Um, you know, sure, technically, that is the floodplain level, but um, you know, is he going to want to? You know, be swimming from his driveway to his house, and <laughs> for the most part, you know, people are are pretty reasonable, and it, it really hasn't been too much of an issue. But once the new maps are adopted by FEMA, right. those old maps don't even get referred to anymore. Right. Correct. Right? So there isn't going to be this floodplain and that floodplain. There's only going to be one, and it's the new right. one. Um, and that should be coming in 2023, am I correct? I think it's 2023, but she said something like, you know, but then by the time we do this and the time we do that, and, you know, it'll have to be 2024. And I don't know that, if that means the maps the or if that means that everything will be in place as far as they're concerned. So I thought, I it was thought there was a series of meetings that happened when I, we're, we're going to have to do the final presentation of their maps and stuff like that. Because I had gone to some meetings originally way back when, and, and they said once the maps are finally approved that they'll have to have some meetings and people can have final input. But I guess right. the, I the guess the OJ's question is that, my, my further question would be, so if, if, if they do adopt this new floodplain, um, does that mean that our ordinances automatically change to, no reflect that or no that's no, what we're that's voting on that's that's have. what this is that's what we're voting on tonight to make sure that they do do that correct so you're right we're we're making changes to our ordinance so that it complies with the new maps because the, the new map. maps basically are calling things different so like as Kelsey, said we, we refer to flood maps they're, they're calling these what insurance risk maps so just the names, the dates, that kind of stuff is is right. They're having different terminology. Yeah, um, like a firm map. They've been referring to firm maps for years, but they didn't put it in our ordinances when they set them up to begin with. So I think the term of art has already changed, and you know we're just treating the flood hazard boundary maps, the firm maps, as the same thing. Uh, but now this is clearer. Um, there won't be any confusion about it. I guess I'm all right. I just want to make sure it's not tying the town into something that yeah. is going to be bad for its inhabitants or or the town itself as far as the safety of the of the um, 
the first responders who are going to go to these places, it, you know, if, if we can't change our ordinances. When will the hearing on this be? Uh, um, I would set it up for the same as all of the land use plan or then it's hearing. The first meeting in January. The first, you know, the January 4th and January 28th. Those are the hearing dates that I have set aside. And those are the ones that meet the statutory requirements. And I would have to send a notice to the paper. I don't know if it's this Friday or next Friday, but, you know, coming right up. This Friday, but um, I have to check again. Okay. Can we have anything else? Do we need to vote that we we approve to bring this to the public hearing? Yes. Okay. And then we have the two public hearings. Correct. And then we vote to, depending on what we hear at the hearings, vote to either go forward or not forward with presenting this to town, town meeting. meeting. Correct. And it'll be on the ballot to vote on during the day. Correct. So we need to vote tonight. We just say we're going to have a public hearing on it on the fourth. Okay, uh, and with these changes, with these proposed changes. Yeah, let's so let's have a pro public hearing on January whatever that first Wednesday, fourth, January fourth, twenty twenty three. Could they come up with some they, kind of map that shows this stuff? Yeah, they're coming. They're good enough. There's there's preliminary maps that are out there and people can comment on them, but but um there's nothing final. If you, if you look at the tax maps like they are now, it's and you put turn on the layer for the floodplain, you'll see what they look like. Which ones though? Is that the old ones? Mm -hmm. You've updated them with the new ones. We did four years ago. Hmm. We haven't changed it because we went back and forth about whether we're going to change it back the 2000 version and so um the engineers like horizons and and steve they know that my tax that our tax maps have the proposed um floodplain maps on them um and steve when he has a client who wants to do something that you know is deterred somewhat by seeing that he doesn't hesitate to you know push forward and then we have to refer to the 2000 maps. Has there been any changes to the, the, the new map proposed from the whoever makes the new map? Do we know that? Have you contacted the floodplain people and said, hey, do, do you have any other changes that are, are, are you planning on any other changes to this map or, or, or is this it? No, this is they still they have the same the same proposed maps from four years ago, um, or that was six years ago, I guess. Now. It's more than that, yeah. I was going to say it was, it was right before the last administration, so they were ready to go right before the last administration, and then it stopped for four years, and then it picked up again as soon as the new administration came in. So, um, so that hearing process, you know, started up again, and we're in the middle of that hearing process. And we've already gotten the maps. I already sent, you know, I sent them to all of you guys. Uh, you know, the the um, they're difficult to read. Mm -hmm. you know, the, they're they're very hard to decipher. Um, they're they're on grand scale. You know, they're one inch equals I don't know. A thousand or two thousand feet or something, and, and it's overlaid the a topo map, um, and it's all in black and white. So I mean, it's it's very tricky to read, but it's the same. That map, the proposed map, was compiled from all the maps that the engineers that the town of Lincoln has been working with for years. They all contributed whatever they did for floodplain mapping, you know, for topo mapping. And that's what we sent off to the FEMA flood mapping people. And then they used everybody's except for one. You know, they, they used, they felt that they had good data, they verified the data and, and they used So it, it sounds to me like all we, all we have to do is vote on it. Vote on in, including the changes in our ordinance and 
And as OJ said, adopt, I mean, uh, getting a uh, public hearing date. Right, that's yeah. all. So I'll I'll make the motion that we adopt changes as presented, and that we hit, we schedule a public hearing for January fourth. Is that what you said? January fourth. Right. Is there a second? Yeah. Steve, all in favor? I'll, I'll second. I don't know if we want to use the word adopt. We want to send it off to a public hearing. Right. Schedule a public hearing. Schedule a public hearing uh, that we approve of the language in here and want to bring it to the to the town body for a public hearing. Is that? Yeah. I'll, I'll make that change. That's fine. Okay. Okay. You second. Steve seconded. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. So before we get to the work session, why don't we do public participation? Is there any public participation? Yep. Yeah. 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 I appreciate you seeing me tonight. Um, I wasn't informed of the last couple things uh it's related to this guy and he doesn't always remember stuff well so it's okay i own the house i have the deed i pay all the bills and it's a great guy it just doesn't happen. Uh, well, I what know. i wanted yeah what i what i wanted to talk about was just to clear up some things with uh, raymond Brooklyn and you know, what he's been saying and implying about me and, and uh but um, so I'm going to just start real quickly and I, it's not going to be long. I want to take up a lot of your time. So I made very few pictures so you can see exactly what's been going on. And I'll tell you what, yeah, I'm not going to give you those things. So um, I, in the back of my land, I bought, I bought my house in 1997. And in 2000, I, bought a fence and worked with Bruce behind me and he did some electricity work for me. And I I hired someone to put in this big plant because I noticed there was some soil there already to hold it back. So it did hold the water back and it did hold it, hold the soil back until 2000 and 20, uh, 20 to 2021, 2020. And this is on the adjacent line. Behind me, yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yes, yeah. and I was never notified that they anybody bought that house either, by the way. But okay. Um, well, I mean, you're that's on the side thing. But I'll give you this. The tank. <clears throat> start here. This is what is the land um, and the dirt and the soil behind the house, and that was the old fence. And it is on his property, but he was just okay with that. But I know I he kind of did that. Kind of Yankee spot thing. He did electricity for me, and then um, these are the, this is all the you know, land that was disturbed, which includes up until uh, the street on both sides of the house. So if you want to take a look at those, and if you have any questions, up, up in that time, <clears throat> up until that time, we've been taking care of our own water, off our own stuff, and it's been working that way for a hundred years. Well, just since two thousand, and then all of a sudden. He's blaming it on us, but his house is like two and a half feet higher than it was before. And it's just a big slope right down into her lap. Mm -hmm. And so you're saying when you put the house up, he regraded the lot. Yes, yeah. Sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And it's if you measure it, it's over 50% of the lot. We're not really screaming so much about that, but I would like to make sure he gets it engineered so it won't flood anymore. Right. That's all we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he told me he was an engineer, and I and I couldn't find him as being an engineer. Uh, he's got a drawing. He's got he's got the French drain on the wrong side of the cement wall. On this one, things like that. The, the thing that he presented to us, it's the French drain is wrong. There's some some things that wouldn't really work out anyway. I didn't really stop um, from his drawing on the wrong side. This is damage to a property. I can't keep the the kitchen floor up. I have to go under there again. This this weekend and jack it up because once the snow starts coming off the heat, I can't get in that crawl space. All right. 
and uh, obviously these are the last two and I won't burn you anymore, but he had mentioned that it's coming off the roof. The roof is the same level that it was before. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not coming off the roof anymore. This is this is a thing, that, uh, what is this? The, what do you call it? The roof over the bricks? This is a roof over the bricks. Yeah. And this is where it's coming in through here. And this itself is underneath this. So it didn't come off the roof and down. The water's not even coming in off from the knee. It heats from here and it heats from here. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't make a big dog. And this is what my deck used to look like for many years. And this is what it looks like now. And this is what happened in two years. Mm -hmm. The bricks themselves settled in. And when I would mow the lawn in the last two years, I it would be so wet on, if you're looking at the house on the left side, that I really took up soil to the end grass when I was mowing the lawn. Um, so, and how? It took us a while to figure out what was going on. Yeah. The saw was exploding, like it wasn't attached to the soil. And we thought it was coming yeah. from the neighbor next door. And we got to think it's coming off of Bergman's lot. But anyway, this is a last two. question. We need to have one conversation. Yeah. Carol? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to. We have this conversation and that conversation. Your choice. You're the, you're the <laughs> well, we're talking up here. So, okay. yeah. I'm, you know, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this is a slope. I, I like my point on the on their land. This is the slope, and this is where most of it comes down. And it goes all the way to the front of my house, mm -hmm. the water, yeah. all the way from the top. And um, even the rocks that you see, and every time it rains, it would just leave rocks and take all the soil down and put it, put it on down. It weeps for a few days after it's done the rain, it just builds well, up over there somewhere and yeah. discharges all the time. So, in the, in, um, it was mitigated well, and it never leaked it. 20 or 2021. 20, and uh, he said he found this uh, white, what do you call the white things with the holes? Oh, there's some. Behind the garage. Just like a little. It was just sitting there for years. It wasn't Somebody attempted a French drain years ago. Right? No, nobody. That was my house. It was sitting on the top of the ground. Right, right. So, but it wasn't meant. I do have a French drain on the side of the garage and put it in 2000, and it's been working ever since so, until now. So where are all these rocks coming from? Um, they dug two feet deeper than uh, made their cellar bigger. So there was a huge pile. That's just all everything they took out from um, under the house. Huge. So they're just work, working their way onto your land? That all that's running, the soil and the water is running out. The water. Yeah. yeah. It goes underneath, so it rises the grass. So when I want a mow in the summertime, it takes the whole soil with it. But that I'm running also. So I really appreciate his his offerings, uh, but I don't think it's uh, um, really as as easy as he thinks it should be, or is. Um, and I don't lie, by the way. I don't like my character to be mm -hmm. slandered by people. But um, yeah. We're going to move the propane. Oh, yeah. I never said it. I, I, in fact, I offered it. And I never said I wouldn't pay for the propane bags. I think I, you know, that's not a big deal. To me. That the big deal is my bricks mostly and getting it insured. Where's where your last communication with your neighbor? Um, you sent him something this weekend, the last weekend. Yeah, I sent him something and then he canceled canceled the meeting and said he wouldn't come here. I I I in October I talked to him in September, beginning of September, and I didn't hear anything until the end of October. And by that time he was supposed to have that done, correct? He didn't have it done. He just keeps talking and talking about he was under the ocean and he goes here, he goes there, he goes to London. And it, it just, it's like talking to somebody who doesn't really give you much. Does that make sense? Like I'm being, it's, yeah. it's bizarre. That's what good neighbors do. That's all we hear. That's what he tells me. 
at Ingsboro. And then I asked, I asked Carol, I asked oh, everybody I knew to come and look because it's really hard to show pictures of it. But please come to my house and look and look and look. And I asked a lot of people. Um, he refused, his mother refused, the father refused, and he was right there, but he wouldn't look at the bricks. He, he's blaming it on the, the roof, which is the same height as it's always been, and he's blaming, you know, he's not blaming it on what it should be blamed on. So the center room in the house, there must be some ponding or something going under there because it smells musty all the time now. This water's like going underneath the house. It's... Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have a, a cellar. I never could afford a cellar if I didn't have that. Kind of that's, it, it, it's kind of where I'm at. And, and I'm not dissing him. It, and I appreciate him doing that, but it has to be done correctly. And it has to be um, taken care of, not just the, uh, you know. I remember correctly, you wanted to have it on the sale, on the sale by now. When Last time we talked to you last one. I wanted it last summer to be on sale, but you all said I had to wait till October. And I went to October and October went and he's in uh, Saudi Arabia. He said it was in Saudi Arabia, with, uh, um, you know, doing under the sea and looking at it. It's like, I just get off these things. It's like, it's it's just the way it's. What, what do you mean by we said you had to wait? October to well, sell your house. Yeah, you decided that uh, not to sell my house, but for this to happen, you gave him until October. To yeah, then it. you wanted to come back for an update. If I remember correctly, they came for the yeah. board. They said they were discussing to get adjudicated or taken care of by end of October, which just hasn't happened yet. Meantime, Jane was waiting to get this taken care of, so probably it's worth more when you go to sell it. And we came up with an update. I can't an sell an update. Update. it's leaving it, and the, and the bricks I have to be doing. You know, I have to like make it better. Okay, so I guess I've got a picture too. It shows where the where the edge of the bricks meet the hot top. I got it. Right. I showed them. Yeah, well, I got one. It's level. It's not down two inches. Oh, we have the level. Yeah. yeah. It was the last two years that all that's happened. Yeah. I swear. Okay. That's what it is. Comes any, over any board members have any questions? Down. I'm sorry. I'm asking the board if anyone has Cal, do you have any questions? Paul? Yeah, I, I thought that the next time we met on this, I think OJ and I talked about it at the, the I mean the planning board meeting not too long ago said that if we were going to discuss this, we wanted to have both um the, the applicant, you know, both people there so we could come to some resolve. Right. Well, we didn't put it on as a gender item, but they chose to come in yeah, during public sure participation. That's okay. Well, I, I know. I mean, but, but we're here in one, we're here in Steve's side and, and Jane's side, but we're not the guy that, that, that needs to be, we, we need to be in discussions with, seems to not be available or something. So I think to me, the, the proper thing to do would be to ask him to come to a planning board meeting and have Steve, and Jane come in so we, we can. See if we can get this because the gentleman did say that he was going to fix it. The first meeting he came in, at, all all three of you guys were there. He did say, "Look, I'm willing to fix this. I'm willing to take care of it." Sounds to me like it's it's not been fixed. So to me, the best my recommendation would be to get all all the parties involved in the room so we can hash this thing out and get move on because it doesn't seem like anything's happening. So. Well, I agree. I agree, Paul, but I wanted, I hadn't spoke at all about this to the, the board, really, of the planning board, and he has sent letters that... Um, well, I mean, that's, that's know, his so, prerogative. I mean, yeah, yeah, you can't talk to him. We can't side. get anywhere with just the two of you. We can't get anywhere with just two of you. We got to have him there, too. Oh, you know, I know I'm, that. I'm not saying that we should. But... So, I mean... What's going to show up? We're basically what, where we were. Nothing's changed, really, that no. So do we go the path of getting a third party engineer or something in there? It is over 50% of the lot. It's easy. Well, to it's see. not, you know, the board doesn't have any authority to hire an engineer. But you have how one. does that come down? I mean, it says it in the laws, regulations. Well, it's an enforcement issue. If the, if he's done that, it's an enforcement issue. So, yeah, the town does have the authority to do that. Right. Not the board, not the planning board. It, it's not going to happen. It's a, select, it's it's a board of selectmen. You're correct. Right. So, so that's what we said. 
So which the board I doesn't make the decision about having a third party and having the attorney rate come and look at it. And, yeah, I mean, we don't rate for it doesn't work work for us, so we can't whatever. we can't expend any taxpayer dollars to send them over. Even though I pay taxes. He works for the selectman, not for the planning. Yeah, board. he doesn't work for the planning board. He works for the select person. Okay. Yeah. Well, no. Enforcement. I don't think speak. You can speak on this. Enforcement is the selectman, but if, if the planning board can expend monies, they they have an engineering budget. They can do whatever they want. But I mean, I I think it. To me, it sounds like it's an enforcement issue. But you got to make sure that that you have a something wrong, a deficiency before you can say it's a it's an enforcement. In order to do that, you have to have someone go over and see that. And, and I'm I think one of the things we talked about is is there that type of documentation that can prove that there there actually was more than 50 percent excavated and i think you know that that's the that's the question here he uh yeah. that's 31 feet from his line to the garage and it's 21 feet from the garage to the other line and it's all been dug up from that 31 feet all the way to school street and so that's 10 feet over half so and then it jogs a little bit in when you go back to the garage. so that's another four feet times whatever is left I mean, I'm not disagreeing with you, Steve. I'm just saying that, that oh, you know, we need to get an that. independent person in there to take a look at it, T take a look at the minutes, take a look at what they excavated, and and say yes, it appears that there was, and no, it appears that there's not. I mean, but it can't be you. It has to be, I yeah. would think, a third party that takes a look at it. Just get somebody to prove this little whatever he wants to do about putting up his wall or whatever would probably solve everything. So, so Ray Corber can't come. Even though it goes to South Mountain places and, and residences, right? Well, I mean, you know, those you individual like, applicants they pay, they, they pay, they pay for rate. They pay rate. Well, I'll pay rate quarter. But it's on the other guy. He's the one who's supposed to be showing up the beans. So, to pay, according to us. Well, you know, I want to make sure that it is, yeah. and I, and I, and I and then after that. So yeah, but he's not going to let him go on your property. <laughs> What's that? He may not let them go on his property to be able to look at that and do that. Well, I mean, he he should be able to look at the the application and find out what what was proposed. I would think. And there were pictures taken, what weren't there? Yes, absolutely. So yeah, between the pictures, yeah, <laughs> all the time. Didn't send me those pictures with the sticks. Between the pictures that were taken, but. Again, it, it's going to come down to getting all three people in the room, and and, and the guy, I, I, I don't know yeah. the guy, but the guy definitely said he was he was willing to take care of it at the first meeting, and nothing's happened. So, I mean, I, I would think uh, we could just call him in and have a conversation and say, "We really need you to stick to your word and and take care of this and see see what he says," because it it didn't seem like he was against doing it. I uh, well, it, well, if you read the what he wrote, he definitely was against the fact that it was the bricks and affecting the lawn. He, it's he, so yeah, it, he definitely went against that, and he didn't even bother looking. And I said, "Come walk on this soil, you know, look at the bricks, you know, he's right there on his little stick thing, you know." And, and uh, I, Paul, he just doesn't want to do it to take care of it. He wants to put in the small drain. He said, and it's not even correctly drawn. Um, he said he was an engineer. He says this. He says that, and it, I go. It goes nowhere. You know what I mean? You ever talk to somebody like that? <laughs> well, he's proposed a solution, correct? Mm -hmm. He has, and but he hasn't enacted on it. No. Correct. Yeah, but you're not happy right. with the solution. I would like my bricks. If you did at least my time, bricks. Happy with it, so. My my patio was like bricks is terrible. Because of the water. What does he say about the bricks? What what? What has he said? Does he take responsibility? No, he denies it. He doesn't. He, I guess he doesn't answer you. Like I asked, he, he never told me I did. I had to pay. I said, I, you know, I'll put in some money. And I thought, oh, why'd you say that, Jane? Because I'm not always too nice. Yeah, I'll give you some money. And but um, I still will. But he then he wrote you all that I was refusing to pay. I never refused to pay. Um. I just want my patio fixed. I know he probably can't afford to shell up the house. I mean, we're going to get seven carjacks under there. But uh, seriously, to hold up the kitchen. Um, but I mean, 
what he's going to put in is not correct anyway, according to Steve, and, and an engineer needs to look at it then because it's on the wrong side and it's going to be small and it just won't work. It just, he said it won't work. Get the French drain on the wrong side of the wall. Mm -hmm. So, you know, do I hire an engineer then? I don't know how to do that. Is there one around that I could hire? Yeah, there's plenty of engineers. Yeah, I could find, you could find somebody. Mm -hmm. you know, we can't. We can't recommend. Right, no. right. Well, well, what do you do? I, I, was, I, was ask, I was asking Carol, Bob Harris had a problem up there with his neighbor. And within a couple of weeks, he had somebody in there digging and it's gone. So I don't know if he went through you guys or Carol or what, but. No, I think he I think he hired an engineer, but I'd have to double check. He, he just did it though. It's like gone, done. He hired the engineer. And they didn't even have any damage. It was just going on the other guy's land. But this guy here is always, well, this is what good neighbors do. Okay. Can, can the, uh, Jim? Yeah. Might the uh, planning board just write a letter to the board of selectmen and ask them to take a look at it as an enforcement issue and see from there if, if uh, the town could either work with Jane or, or or something to be able to uh, check and see if he disturbed more than 50% of the lot. And then if he did, th then it becomes an enforcement issue and, and just follow it that way. I think they have to hire somebody to determine whether it's the, what percentage is disturbed. That's, that's what I'm saying, Carol, but the planning board could say, we had Jane and Steve come in and they're having issues and they believe it was from their their abutter um who they say um disturbed more than 50 percent of the lot this is this is an enforcement issue and we think that the board should, should take a look at it um and, and see if the board agrees and if they do they can hire ray corber whether jane helps them pay for it or not I, that, that's up between the board of selectmen and jane um, and then they, they can go and, you know, that guy might see the seriousness of it if it, you know, and not even let it get that far and say, you know what, I'll do something different. Something's better than nothing. That's what we got. Right. I mean, at least, at least maybe it'll get this guy's attention. So he might stay in Lincoln to be able to address it. And maybe, you know, maybe he'll come before the board, either the planning board, the board of selectmen and say, look, I'm willing to do this, which he already has said once and hasn't done it. So. I'm just trying to nudge the guy a little bit to yeah to to be able to get some something moving and maybe that you know like I said maybe the planning board can write a letter to the board of selectmen not now that OJ's I mean OJ's familiar with everything he can address it that way and see what the board says that would be appreciated he just he did write a letter and said just tell me they, what do you say okay. Get going. Whatever you ready, say okay. Does anyone else agree with that? Jim, hey, that's good. For a half a year. I mean, maybe they ought to go on their own to the board, Suckman, without, without the planning board. Pardon me. I mean, you know, we're kind of directing them as an enforcement issue. They're in. They're in the wrong with the wrong board. Right, and, right. and that's what I'm saying. A, we haven't had a site plan review on this because it's not. You know, it's residential. It's not something the board gets involved in. Well, the reason we didn't have a site plan review um, about it, Jim, was if what they're saying is true, if you disturb more than 50% of the lot, then we should have had a site plan review. So it, is, so it is an enforcement issue if, in fact, you disturb more than 50% of the lot. And it should have then come before, before a planning board, and it didn't. But if he didn't disturb more than 50% of the lot, then he didn't need to come to the, the planning board. But I got, I got a question. Go ahead. <clears throat> If you're, if you're just taking deeper than the existing foundation, that is very part of the lot? Yes. Take a look at the definition of disturbance, you'll see. You're, 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 you're considering replacing an existing foundation with like in kind of a disturbance? Take a look, take yeah. a look at the definition of disturbance. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's moving earth it's it's unearthing stuff it's you know that's that's all part of it it was good floor it's not impervious it was what's that <laughs> taking that dirt floor it's not impervious right mm -hmm. when we were talking about south peak and the and the 
the utilities and things like that that had already been unearthed and when someone had to go back over and just tie into it ray said that was that was disturbance when you put a pile of gravel somewhere that's disturbance so yeah. it, it meets it meets the definition of disturbance like you said i'm not actually going to have clarification yeah, you notice right. that last step on his back porch is it's still waiting for more fill. It's flying in the air. Mm -hmm. But that's where they decided to quit. Here's the picture. They filled it in. Kind of got enough fill out there already. Yeah. But I, I mean it come and look at my property before they did it because they would have known so that it was already mitigated. I mean, the garage wasn't the garage wasn't disturbed, yeah. right? The garage was not disturbed, nor the parking. The parking area was that disturbed? No, just the, no, the pavement. So I mean, I, I don't know how much of that. Yeah. And you know, so you'd have to take a look at that and see oh, if it's fifty percent. I don't know. Yeah, we'll just have to get someone to do that. But I think you know, Jimmy's right that. You know, you, you might want to go to the board of selectmen, and, and I mean, the planning board could write the, a letter as well, saying, "Look, they came, they came to the planning board, and, and we think it's an enforcement issue." You know, I think we last time we decided we weren't going to take any actions unless both parties were present. Yeah. So I think for us to, you know, go back tonight and take action. We're trying to figure but, out what we're going to do. Yeah, I understand that. Can we do? Well, I think I'm not going to get both parties. Go. Well, which we said yes, back six months ago. I'll tell, I know, but tell them, let's go. Yeah, and then what's happening? He'll go. He never gave him a different time book show at the same time. He gave him excuses out of state, out of the country. I'll ask him to come again. Well, he was here mm. right before Thanksgiving. The, I've only seen missed him three meeting. times had, in my lifetime. We had an opportunity. What's that, Jane? I've only saw him three times in my lifetime. And the whole time that place was being built, no one told me a thing. Nobody told me anything. I'd ask him and they'd run away. Because Ron was supposed to be telling me stuff, and he never told me a thing for two years. So I've I've had a rough time here. Um, you know, I want to sell this place up. So. Nope. Just just the comments. You know, one of my concerns as a selectman is if you come and ask us to enforce. Um, we've become aware that the the addition on the back of your house that is built into the setback was was never built to what the permit um, was approved for. Oh, you never changed the permit. We never saw a drawing. You know, honestly, did you, you hear anybody ever <laughs> see a drawing? It's got the same amount of roof except for that little overhang. That was it. It's a, it's built on the original footprint except for when we walk in the door. Yeah, it was actually. It was a it was the same thing there. It just went up high. It didn't like go out further. It didn't go back further. Closer. No, he's always saying we made it closer to his backyard. It's sitting on the same original foundation. Right, right. There was no any further. It was sitting on the same foundation. Exactly. Didn't build it any closer to his yard at all. No, not one inch. Pinky promise. What's that? Pinky promise. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He promised. No, and I did not. That little roof I put on behind the garage there to keep brakes and stuff. And it was when Bruce was there. I built it. It doesn't it wasn't even attached to their garage. It's freestanding. But you know, it was me and Bruce back then. It worked. <laughs> Who cared? Nobody cared. Nobody knew. Well, we all got along. I got yeah. along there for 25 years with all my old neighbors, and, and they were wonderful. And this is the first time I've ever run into trouble with anybody on that one. That uh, street, so I'm ready to get out of it anyway. But yeah, so, no, I never had problems. So, so would everybody's lawn. We want to try and have another meeting when the other party can be here as well. How does it, what do you guys want to do? He, he says he's signing off until spring, I guess. That's the last email said. Oh, no, oh, he can zoom in from anywhere in the world, yeah, correct. No. Mm -hmm. So he didn't want to today, is he? I don't know what you're going to gather by that, Jim, unless you determine whether or not there's a violation or not. A, co general... a cooperative settlement is going to be a lot easier than. Oh, Jay, I agree with I agree with you. But that, 
which, not, which, not, which not. could involve going to court, hiring engineers. I mean, it could be a three, four year process. If we, if we wanted to take legal action, yeah. I mean, you've seen how long it takes for the town to go through a legal process. Yes, I have. Okay. I have. And you might not get it. But from our standpoint, so, I guess if so, this water stays on his side of the friggin' line, nobody cares. I don't care. Well, we've had that discussion already, and he's been to this board, and he said he was going to take care of it, and nothing has happened. Not nothing, but I mean, there's, there's been a plan developed, but nothing concrete has happened. No, and that, but yeah. you've you've agreed with the the propane tanks relocating and sure. in, in the Sorry. in the fence being. I, I don't even care if he doesn't do it. The only thing. I don't even need it. You, you want to put the propane tanks on the other side of the house where it's so wet that they wouldn't stand up. And that's all we said. You have to hide your house. Yeah. It was so yeah. wet they said, said I'll move them for you. We'll put them on the other side of the house. You can't put them in, they'll fall over. Okay. Did it's, you have a place to put them though? I do. I'm going to try to get uh, some small tanks and put them out back, see if they'll fit. If that's legal, I'll do that. I have someone coming to the house to do it. First side of the line, if they go to a smaller yeah, tank, to keep it's only like one inch over on his line anyway. You know, he doesn't have you already right to put them on his tank, on his line without an easement. So, yeah. Well, I told him that. It was, well, then yeah. it's in, you know, it's in the setback area. Yeah. You know, it's, I can't move them anywhere else. I don't know what I'm telling you. Where, where were they? Where were the tanks before they are where are where they are now? Where are they right behind the house? Yeah. They've always been there? No, yeah. since we went to propane. Yeah. yeah. And his are right on right at the end of the garage. Yeah, right next to it. Who's are getting pretty tumbly looking to? So that his are down there. I don't know if that's a setback or not, but okay. And then you come around the corner, there's a window. They got to stay how many feet away from the window? I'm sure yeah. it's those. So, but I guess I'm hearing you've agreed to move the tanks. You don't have any place to move the tanks. No, I'll figure it out. Yeah, I'll that part's we'll okay. make it happen. But it'd be nice if you dried up that side of the yard first. We could put them there. It's like a catch he 22. Never, he never, I never told him I was going to. I mean, um, he never said, says it. he doesn't say anything. He just said, oh, this is great. This is good neighborly. I'm a good neighbor. I'm a good neighbor. Mm -hmm. All right, whatever. It's like, okay. Um, Got a crack on us next door for 16 years. They were good neighbors. We weren't their customers, but never had any trouble with them. Yeah. So anyway, if I could help go from there and see, I'll call him and see if we can get another meeting. Is that what you want? We can do that. I have to talk to him. Say it's at the point where it's going to get expensive. That's the way I see it. Well, there's some way to eliminate that. Well, we should be all ears. But he doesn't believe that he caused that or that water, that soil that was allowed to be dug up, um, caused it. But if anybody came to the house and looked at the places before you allow stuff to so, build or dig. <coughs> Look at what's behind it. You, can, you know, you just can't say, okay, yeah, you can dig it two feet deep and not even know that there's already a foot on the other side. I mean, you just shouldn't do that. It's not fair to me. All right. Does anyone have anything else? I appreciate your time. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Try to get them together. I think you I know, guess. you know them better than I do. Maybe you want to try to get them together. I mean, I, I just get the emails back, and I usually yeah. have to send them to his contract yep. in order and her to get his attention in order for him to respond. So, oh, I yep. know her is that I think he there? works for the United Nations or something, and I think he sets up like emergency hospitals, that sort of thing. I, I every time I look him up, he's doing something different. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to send him. But I know he's not. I a meeting day by Thursday mail. He's a patent contract. You by email, oh, Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> thank you, Good luck, Jane. Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. Good. We're just there. Thank you, my brother. <laughs> All right. Time to sign ordinance. You guys, we must be almost done. Uh, So we're on page 75.
Where are you at now? Page 75 is the sign ordinance. Oh, sign ordinance in my truck. I'm not going to go get it. Yeah, you've got this right in front of you somewhere. Well, you oh, know, it's in the been saving it. Uh huh. No, but I, I got all this. This is all different so far. These issues updated, but we've already changed. This is the new printout. You got the new printout. Oh, okay. I don't have any sign on this, but what plane development? So, do we need to go back? Based on what what you said, OJ, on the off premise signs, and revisit that. My suggestion is let's not let's keep going forward. Yeah, I with think... all these other definitions and stuff, and 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 at the end we can go back and look look for that one aspect. Got it. <laughs> So on page 75, we're just looking at what's not right. on internally neutral. illuminated sign. What's that? Internally illuminated sign. That's where we're at. My so 75 that I have doesn't say anything. It's not content neutral. It, it is, is content neutral. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me. Um, you said page 75? Page yeah. 75. And the one that I emailed you, you know, that was part of your package. Or the, the drop-off box? The yeah, the when she edited it, the, the numbers of the pages changed. Oh, right. so what page? Yeah, I have no idea because I'm at home. So maybe I should, I'm not going to be able to keep up with you if I don't have the same pages. It's, it's go to the paragraph that starts internally illuminated signs in the definitions. On page, on page 75. Not yeah. necessarily. Okay, let me <laughs> Section nine. Hang on. Section nine, general provisions. Hang on. The ones she emailed me are all highlighted. So section externally illuminated signs? Internally illuminated signs. Hang on. Maybe I can find them. Found general provisions. Okay, general provisions. A says sign area. Sign area, yeah. Okay, get down to whatever letter it is that is internally illuminated signs. It might have been M. Oh, yeah, they crossed it out. M, M is now J. J. But in, in your the original version of the sign ordinance, it should say M. Okay. I found general provisions and I'm not finding an M. So general provisions, first is sign area. Oops, where is it? Sign area, then number of signs. Hang on, OJ. I'm I'm, I'm not very computer literate sometimes, so I'm slower trying to get it. So all right. Keep going. Hopefully, M is internally illuminated sign. Oh, you know, I have the old sign ones right here, right? Yeah. Is there only one general provisions section? Do you see off premises signs or any of that stuff? Okay, Paul, how about page 70? Okay, I'll go to 70. 70. I have a externally illuminated signs. I have flags, freestanding signs on page 70 that she sent me. Okay, keep going. Home occupation. Home occupation signs, got that, yeah. Okay, industrial building information. That is um, internally illuminated sign. I got it. Internally illuminated signs. I have that now. Page That's 71. where we're starting. That's where you are. Yes. And we're suggesting that it's content neutral. Just leave it alone. 
So it is content neutral because the next one after that you guys have is as merchandise signs. Correct. Okay. All and right. That's, so that's not content neutral. Correct. Or have anything written on them. Right. You don't really read it. I have a farm written kayaks. I have a big stack of kayaks glued to the you know a bunch of kayaks glued to the side of the building. It's <laughs> That's true. It is content neutral. Yeah. What's that merchandise signs? Yeah, it's basically saying that if you're displaying your merchandise for the sole purpose for the purpose of having it advertise your business. Right. Like, like the ATV out in the front lawn that says rent me. You have no motor. That's that's right. <laughs> Two four flat tires and no motor. <laughs> that's a sign, according to our definition. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say we leave that. Yeah, let's challenge. I think it's. Don't say that on tape. Okay, I didn't say that on tape. Um, but it's content. I would say it's content. I would think so. I mean, it's more like a the structure of the sign, the way it's built. Daniel Webster knew that. Didn't they say cobbler used to hang out with shoe? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Neon sign is fine. I would say so. Off premise sign. Here we go. Can the other two were they okay or did you change? Internally lit sign is fine. Merchandise sign is fine. Neon okay. sign is fine. Mm -hmm. So you got to take the not content neutral out of that. Merchandise. Right. Well, that's Carol's edits. That, that's that's, not that's, gonna, yeah, that's I'll take all those neutral. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, so, Paul, I just emailed you the the one that we're looking at. Okay. I I think I got I think I, o, OJ guided me through where where you are, so I can follow. I think. <laughs> so, you know, all I, premise signs yeah. are are now considered content neutral, right? Uh, I, OJ. That's what the recent uh, court case suggested. Yes. So we should take out all the not content neutral, and leave off premise signs alone. Leave not leave it alone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, a second. Except for, except for OJ, I think. Tourist attractions. Um, where it says off premise. If you go down to where it says off premise directional signs. Right, well, that's a different direct definition. So we're. Oh, you. So we're yeah, no, still on, on still on off premise signs talks about tourist. Okay, I, I thought you were in a general queue of the whole thing, but that's all right. Yep. Tourist attractions are allowed one off premise sign by special exception. So that, you know, basically, tourist attraction can have a billboard, but a restaurant can't. That's what that's saying. Why don't you just say that? Take out tourist attraction and just say that. So you I could would, say, I would, wait, go, go ahead. I was going to say something, but I was going to say all other businesses are allowed one off premise sign by special exception. Right. Okay. It's basically, what I was going to say, you, yeah. instead of saying all are prohibited, what if we said off premise signs are allowed only by special exception, exception. period I agree with, that. with the exception what about permitted not allowed no exceptions uh, okay so cross out tourist attraction sentence cross out otherwise and just say all off-premise signs are permitted only by special exception by special exception Okay, well, what about the first one, number two, standards? Businesses located where an on-site sign would not be visible from main roads are allowed one off-premise sign. Okay, that's the same thing. Special special stuff. Okay, yeah. so we can just make it the same for everybody. So, OJ, why don't we just, yeah, just, just cross up? 
cross out the tourist attractions or allowed one off-premise line by special exception because in the standard number two, Roman number two, it says business locations, businesses located where an off-site sign would not be visible from main roads are allowed one off-premise sign by special exception with the ZBA. That okay. kind of says that kind of says everything that you were saying, right? Well, I mean, we're trying to. The next line says tourist attractions are allowed one off-premise sign. And, and what I'm saying is cross that whole thing off because the, the, the paragraph up above it says exactly what OJ it, just said. Well, well it, it does, does only only for that's saying that that for businesses that are not visible from main roads, the ZBA would determine whether the business is not visible from main roads. So that's specifically talking about special exceptions for businesses that are not visible from main roads. Yeah. So, tourist attractions, you need to read the sign. Let's get rid of that. But then just say all off-premise signs are permitted only by special exceptions provided in Article 8 of this ordinance. So, so then the CBA can look at other exceptions, even if the business is visible from a main road. Okay, and, yeah, because, and because, if we want the word business, though, because what about the church? I mean, the, the court case was about a church. Um, so does that count as a business or anything that's non-residential as a business? Pretty much? Well, right. whether the applicant? You know, I guess someone that has a single family home, they're probably not going to be looking for an off-premise sign and then right, but a, a church. A church might. I'll take, well, we just take that that all otherwise all off-premise signs are prohibited except by special exception. Right. She was but going back to I just want to make sure we're not limiting ourselves to you know business because you have to you decide to see whether it's a business or not. The second the second point there were talks about standards. Yeah. It says businesses okay, located. Is it true business? So how about properties? Properties is better. And we need to be careful in dealing with any religious institution. And then <laughs> in the bottom sentence, where it says determining whether the business is not visible, it should say the property. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So swap out the word property for businesses. So the first businesses should be turned to properties, and the second business should should be turned to property. Property. Properties. Cross out tourist attractions and then change that last sentence to say permitted only. Okay. Off premise directional sign. Yeah, that that's not none of that's content neutral because it says it you're saying it's a directional sign. You have to read it to know it's a directional sign. Right. Well, you make an exception, though, for real estate. Well, I think, though, that you could, the off-premise sign will take care of it because if you have a, if you want a directional sign, you just go to the ZBA. That would be one of the things that they consider. Yep. What you need for your business, what's reasonable. So I think yeah. we would cross that whole thing right off, wouldn't we? Off-premise sign. Yep. Right. You would do yep. that all together. Right. So Q disappears. Can we um <coughs> portable signs is okay? Fine. Yeah. Projecting signs is okay. Well, I'm really moving. Okay. Uh... Am I late? I don't know. Public event banner. Um, Just for clarification, how many people on the board remember that through telephone poll by the entrance going into the, the shopping center have been gone to the ZBA and granted approval to put a, a public event banner on anytime they wanted to? perpetuity 
Really? So it was owned by the Planning and Zoning Board. Hmm. Hmm. The one right over here? Yeah. No, I didn't know that. It's right um, in the town records. If you go back far enough, it's recorded in the DBA minutes. Well, yeah. I would say that the public event banner is content neutral. It's the you know? it's the event. It's not what's what's written on the banner that we're regulating. So if you're having a public event, you can put up those two banners per event. Doesn't matter what they say, but you can put up two. So the the description needs to go away, and they, they leave the standard. Is what you're saying? Well. No, I think no special. It's it's for special events. You can put up two banners, right? But it says that in the standard, right? So if you take the the description is what tells you that it's concerts, carnivals, and parades. So if you take that out, it, it, it no, says including but not limited. To not, yeah, not limited to. It's giving examples of special events. Yeah, Jim's birthday. Yeah, so if you're having a carnival, you can put up two banners, but we're not telling you what you can or cannot say on those banners. So it's content neutral. I think real estate sign and real estate, we've kind of addressed with every residential property gets a sign. Yeah, so, so that, can be the, that can be the real estate sign. Yeah. So we can get rid of the real estate altogether, the next two things. Yeah, really? real estate off premise. Yeah. Do you have the blackboard? Real estate no. signs subdivision. You get rid of that. Yeah. Reflecting signs should be okay. Hang on, OJ. Uh, on Real estate signs under B2, a maximum three off-premise directional signs for non-residential properties are allowed. Uh, the maximum size is four square feet per directional sign. Real estate signs for non-residential properties do not require a sign permit. Shouldn't we keep that? We can certainly allow them a real estate sign. We either allow them an extra sign anytime they want to or, or not. We could say they're allowed one extra sign if their property is listed with a with a broker. We went through we went through this yeah. earlier when we were talking about real estate signs and yeah, but said, you know, if they want to put it on their, their tree at their house, it doesn't matter. Well, we already have um every house can have a uh, have a sign, so have a sign. So right, right we said that. So if they want to use it for real estate, advertise real estate, they can. They can. And it does not require a sign permit, right? Correct. That's right. All right. I mean, one of the things it did say in the examples was that you couldn't regulate real estate signs because that's not content neutral. But what you can do is tie it to an event just like we tied it to a special event of a carnival or concert. You could say, if you list your house for sale with a you know, real estate agent or, or, or advertise yourself, your house for sale, I guess in any way, you're allowed one extra sign for a period of so many days. It said we could do that. I think it'd be easier just to say, everybody can have one sign. If your house is for sale, that's your sign, right? Easier to regulate, easier to understand. In my opinion, right. I'm all right with that. All right, so get rid of real estate sign, get rid of real estate off premises directional sign, and get rid of real estate sign subdivision. Right. All of it. Yep, yeah, all of that. Oh. Get rid of directional signs. Yeah. Yep. That means the one in Moon Mountain's got to go away. That's not a real estate. It's real estate off premise directional signs. We're no longer having that as a class of sign. We point up the real estate office in Wood Mountain. What? Well, yep. We cross yep. the bridge on the left. That's on your own land. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Because we've got under real estate sign subdivision W, then, then you go, it goes into reflective sign, roof sign, subdivision sign. Yeah. 
We have a word real estate we're sign real subdivision. Estate subdivision. We'll do re reflecting sign is next. Okay. Are you good up till then? I'm good up till then. Yes. All right. So reflecting sign. So that's not content neutral. I'd say it's content neutral. Yeah, I, it is content neutral. It doesn't yeah. need to come out. It doesn't need to come out. So leave it in there, right? Yeah. You think that's content neutral? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a describing yeah. the construction of the sign. Well, it does deal with construction, but you have to, it has to be reflective to know that it's a reflective sign. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It did, like it does, you know, you can, you can, you can regulate the, the construction of the sign. Mm. You can and, and you can regulate what it's made of, right? Is that and that's content neutral? Yes. Right. right. Okay. Um, I think a roof sign is fine as it is. I would say so. Um, subdivision sign. Content neutral. Got to get rid of that. So that would just go basically once this one sign per lot, they can have whatever it means. Exactly. So you're getting rid of Z subdivision signs. Is that Roman numeral one and two as well? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So that's sub that section Z, yeah. and then one and two are coming out. I want to ask a question about one of the developers. The signs on their property they have a half mile road. Are they required to follow these signs in their own property? Regulations? Because you have, have regulations. You have, you have a sign put up for subdivisions. I use an example in Sports Ridge per se, not saying they did it. But you're in South Ridge, Sports Ridge, they get a subdivision going up on this property. The all the signs are in town in the envelope on the property. Can't keep the main road. So are they, are they required to follow the regulations? On their own property. This was asked me on the QT, by the way. Yeah, I'm, usually if you can't see it from the street, it's on private property. I mean, <clears throat> that's what I'm saying. They wanted clarification on it. It's a public way. It's not. It's not town maintained. So there was a regulation that you can't put a regulation on their own property just by subdivision. Going into it, this was if somebody looked at the print of the paper I had and they asked me what's going on, how would it affect me? This, this, this is for clarification, you know what I'm saying? Good, this, good, this, good question, John. Yeah, that's a good one, and I don't know what the answer is. I mean, can we regulate a sign? Let's talk, let's say the pines. You cannot see the pines from a town owned and maintained road. You can see it quite clearly from the, the public, publicly accessed roads that are in the Forest Ridge network of roads. You said, I'm not trying to cause problems. No, that's a good question. That's a good question. So, do we over, do we, we don't want to over simplify it, and we don't want to over management sometimes. So, we, how are we going to go? Right. Remember when they used to paint those little signs on the I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear all what Joe was saying. Oh. Joe, say it again. You get a subdivision, let's say Forest Ridge. You get a subdivision sign. It's the sign entirely and then you're on your on your property in the development. You put it beside you, you say you can't put a subdivision sign that advertises the development on the other side. So you put a sign coming into the road going in. Subdivision this way, X number of lots for sale. Uh, do we regulate that? Is that on private property or do we, do we have control over it? No, we it's a, that's a directional sign, correct? It's yeah. a private property. Nobody can see many main roads. Right, but it's a directional sign. So it will come out under uh, under the directional sign. Well, the rest of advertising real estate. Yeah, but you can't see it on from public from the street. Yeah, but each parcel gets. Sign. What's that got to do with whether you, where you can see it at? It's it's still a directional sign. It's a combination anyway, directional and advertisement. All of the subdivided lots, for example, was just sort of um, 
So they have common area, like Forest Ridge has common area. So the common area can have one sign. So they could say, this is the subdivision for Forest Ridge, the pines. And then each individual lot can have one sign. So if you have a vacant lot that you have for sale, you could put a sign on that lot. So it's an existing lot. Another, another way to look at it, you get a subdivision that has fully been, has not been fully sold out. The guy that owns it technically still owns the, the subdivision. He did not transfer the title of the whole subdivision to the HOA. He's another lot beside it's trying to advertise from one to the other to further his business. How is that going to be regulated? What I'm saying is, how much control do we have in private property? We go over it to control what is advertised or signs put up on their property. When it doesn't affect the public. Well, every so, pretty much every sign is going on private property, no matter what. So, not a public road. Fourth Ridge is not a public road. The public way. The difference between the public road and the public way. State law mandates that. Yeah. Well, that Fourth Ridge is a limited public way. You know, why don't we try and keep going here? Okay, we're, yeah. because I'm just trying to get clarification on the That's, guys. Well, he, he can come in. He doesn't have a ton. Um, vehicle sign is okay as it is. Okay. Wall lettering, wall graphics, wall signs. Both okay. Window sign or lettering. Yeah, that should be okay. So we don't, you know, we don't, we don't allow flashing strobes or intermittent. <laughs> Ancillary sign. Why is that not content neutral? Well, because it says it has to be not intended to advertise the business. So, so basically, McDonald's gets an extra sign because it advertises their drive-through menu. Oh yeah, and that McDonald's is not with too. Right, but but again, well, it's so not readable from the road. The road. I think you have to leave this wood in there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, um, so he can challenge us, you know. Yeah. If it, you know, it's hard to imagine every circumstance. Right. Well, I mean, if someone comes in, they can ask for a waiver. Say, hey, this is what we want to do. Mm -hmm. Well, can we give a waiver? They have to go to the ZBA. It is special right. exception. Everything sign related is special exception. So, yeah, but we don't, we don't want to deal with that. With no. ancillary signs, if you put up a sign that says the restroom with, a, with an arrow. Well, I'll, didn't I'll, we talk about this before? So let's check back to what we've done before. I'm thinking that we already can start. They can put up a million signs. I think it might have been mentioned somewhere else in the yeah, like the exempted sign. Oh, uh, did we do that under exempt? I think we did under exempted signs. Uh, three. Yeah, we did that under exempted signs. Incidental signs on on site guiding traffic safely to. Bunch of things. Yep, and then the next one is informational signs. Right. What page you want? I think we can just do away with the ancillary sign it's yeah. already addressed. I think it's in the informational and the incidental, which are allowed and exempt uh, from the sign permit and fees. So, so EE is out. Okay. FF we already dealt with. 
we'll put a new um, definition, etc. Okay, yep, and we have that um, going on 5C. It says additional sign when lot is for sale, lease, or rent. Where are you doing? Where are you? I stepped away for a minute. Where are you at now? We're just <laughs> we're on 83. We, you know, we just reviewed, we put in new definitions of temporary signs. And then we basically dropped in a couple of tables on 84 and 85. Does anyone see anything on 84, 85 we need to change? I didn't see any earlier. I'm sorry, Jim. Where, whereabouts are you again? We're on page eight. We just looked over 83 and then 84 and 85. We just kind of, no, those are changes we've already my made. Page, my so page numbers don't, don't jive with yours. What portion okay, of it? But I think what, what we're looking at is things that we've added at previous meetings. Is that correct? Okay. My no? emails you call. Um, pull up the email that I sent you, like, I don't know, 20 minutes or half an hour ago. Yeah. And open that one. All right. <laughs> I want to see if I can find it. Did you get the email, Kevin, to go away? Hmm? you get the email, Kevin, to go away? I don't know. I haven't had a chance to check. Did it come? Did it arrive? Ah, uh, yes. 84 and 85, you're on there, right? Yeah. yeah. This is the part that we cribbed from the Warner um, Warner sign ordinance. I'm sorry? This is the part we took from the Warner, the town of Warner sign yeah. ordinance. We did this a long time ago. This right. Part. But what page are you on? 84 and 85. Okay. This does look familiar. Oh. You looking at temporary signs which are allowed? <clears throat> yes. Yep. Can you do can you underneath five A? It, it it describes political. Campaign is that that's well, content. Well, that's it's not content it's neutral, is it? Signs that coincide with a political campaign or matter in which you may vote. I know, but the fact that it, you're identifying it as a political camp political sign would tell me that it's, it refers it to content. So well, it's not content. Let me just tell you that this this is this, this is written cluster. by. Um, the attorney who's the best in the state for dealing with this issue. And this is his town, Warner, and that's why we're using it. I remember that now. And it doesn't say what the sign has to say. Yeah, you can say something completely unpolitical. Or, right, but, but you we've been basing stuff on things like content and a political identifying it as a political campaign or other sign. That, no, that, not that, sign. It's just the timing of a political campaign. You don't have to read the sign to know if there's a political campaign. Okay. Okay, so, so the two weeks before town meeting is a political campaign time. You can put a sign on your property. It doesn't have to relate to voting or Anything. budgets or... Everyone gets an extra, extra sign. Yeah, time meeting time. Right, but you have to take it down day after town meeting, no matter what it says. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm good with all of that. I mean, again, that's yeah. it's it's it might be fun to see what happens. It's been approved. All right, the integrated sign plan. That lake on the front of So I think the only plan we have like that. Yeah, the mall and the old cluster of sign. Well, it, 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 it's, it's the playhouse. Okay. The playhouse, and maybe before I got here, maybe Clark's. They had the billboard over here, the Clark's Trading Post. They, they had some kind of hearing with that. I, I don't remember. So You're talking about where the Hampton it is now, right? Correct. Yeah. I'm thinking that those were the only two. Hmm. I mean, I've been here for 10 years. Well, there's only been one in 10 years I've been here, and it's for the Playhouse, Gene's Playhouse. <laughs> Okay, and this talks about what types of businesses and locations it applies to. Right. It doesn't say what can be written on the sign. You could say including but not limited to instead of such as. Due to the fact that the town has multiple occupancy properties, uh, it's saying including but not limited to. So that would mean office parks, shopping centers, as well as unconventional developments such as tourist attractions. So I'm just thinking, leaving it open so it's not. You know, just some kind of unusual situation. I, I think that's better. Language. I mean, I think everyone everyone gets a uh, chance to make their case. Put yeah. that in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so you're talking about the integrated sign plan, right? Yes. Yes. So when I when I read the paragraph up above it, it says GG on it. No discrimination against non-commercial signs or speech. <laughs> that pretty much clears the way for anything if you read that paragraph there it is it is really well that basically says you can once you get a sign you can change the copy right right this here, right, it's just, an owner of a sign which is otherwise allowed under this article may substitute non-commercial copy in lieu of other Commercial and non-commercial copy of substitution of copy may be made without any additional approval or permit. Purposes provision is to prevent any inadvertent favoring of commercial speech or favoring of any particular non-commercial message over any other non-commercial message. Provision prevails over a more specific provision to the contrary. This provision does not create the right to increase the total amount of signers on a parcel or allow substitution of all on-site commercial message in place of on-site commercial in place of an on-site commercial message, which is exactly what the integrated sign plans does, doesn't it? No, no, the integrated sign plan allows for like a combination of on-site, on-site, off-site, wall signs, right. It's, it's and maybe two separate off-sites, you know, like for Jean's Playhouse, there was one at McDonald's, there was right. one per here. And then there was yes. one actual, um, I understand that, but the integrated design plan is more tailored towards commercial signage, isn't it? And isn't that what GG kind of does? Right. Well, the, guess, the paragraph GG is not related to the integrated sign permit. No, no, I understand that, OJ, but okay. the integrated sign plan deals with commercial properties. And, and, and so it basically gives us flexibility right. if someone has a special situation. And GG does not apply to commercial properties. It talks about commercial speech versus non-commercial speech. So whether you, if you have a sign, if it's on commercial property or residential property, either way, 
that sign can say something religious or political or insulting, and we don't control it. If they have a right to put up an eight square foot sign, they can put whatever they want on it. We don't control it. That's the content neutral article that goes. I mean, right. that's kind of the crux of the whole thing right there. Right. I have the right to put a sign up. I can put on it what I want. Then the integrated sign plan is, is saying, okay, if, you, if, if you're dealing with, like Carol said, on-site, on-premise signs, off-premise signs, wall signs, freestanding signs, portable signs, you can do an integrated sign plan for, for all of your signs. And it, it says, you'll notice the last sentence is good. It provides the planning board additional flexibility as to size and number of signs on property within the general use in the building center zone. So, yeah. I mean, this is this is good when someone comes in for site plan review, we have something to work with. Right. But it's only, it's only in two zones, right? The general use and village center? Yes. Yep. Okay, so we're going to so take out, we're going to take out such there. as including, and then such as including, but not limited to. Right. And I'd say other than that, that article can stay as it is, right? I think so. Anyone have any other questions on that? All right. Enforcement and violations. Oh, on the applicability, um, it says this section applies to any multi business property, um, singular business occupying a building of 10,000 square feet or more, a gross floor area, or a tourist attraction. And I'm wondering if instead of multi business property, we'll just um, use the word multiple. Occupancy problems. And you probably take out tourist attraction, shouldn't you? Um, because it wouldn't necessarily be business, it could be religious or. Yeah. Um, so, what about multiple occupancy properties instead of multi business properties? Just that one. Yeah. Piece. And maybe just take out um, the tourist attraction too. This section applies to any multi-business property, singular business occupying a business 10,000 square feet, more gross floor area, um, would, lo located within, and just take out tourist attraction, located within a general use, yeah. Yeah, and then, you know, a tourist attraction, they have a gift shop, they have food service. Right. So they'd be, they'd qualify. That sounds good. All right, then the rest of it's okay on the rest of that page. All right. Enforcement and violations. That's good. Appeals is good. Yeah. And then administrative. The other. It takes the numbering. Yeah. It's a numbering. The computer just numbers however it feels like. But sometimes it's hard to overcome. I've tried yeah. to overcome it. Kind of thing. We've got a few other um, within the ordinance temporary land uses. Untreated water now. No, let's say that that's content. Yeah, this content neutral. Yeah. I mean, you looking on page 89? Yeah, license. Yeah, 89 Eight. doesn't. Then it gives you some okay. special, some criteria for special exceptions. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I think so. All right. Temporary land use signage. So we've kind of addressed this in other sections of the ordinance already. Mm 
Okay, so that's the event. I think back to page 66. I would say we leave that in there. What was that? Hey, temporary land uses. Te yeah, 94. temporary land use signage on page 94. Oh, yeah, the temporary it, land use has to do with two things, uh, transient vendors and events. And special events, special events. And so that, you know, that's like a festival. Or, yeah. Yeah, hey. I think that's fine. So I'd say that can all stay in there because it, it doesn't say, it just talks about Four signs per temporary land use application in 21 days, two days to take it down, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't say what, what has to be on the sign. Right. Okay, but if I'm not advertising a carnival or something temporary, I don't get my four signs on a temporary basis. <laughs> no, if you're having an, an event, a special event, and it's a carnival, you can put up four signs, you have to take them down two days after the sign. Okay. You can put up on the signs, whatever you want. Okay, but if I have a pizza place, I want to run a special two days. I can't put up four signs. I'm going to consider that a special event. Well, it's a special <laughs> event. We're getting five dollars pizza. Depends how much you like pizza. Yeah. I think it's getting would be for me. <laughs> then you'd need a temporary <laughs> land use application and see what the planning board says. I would think. Okay. You're going to make me do all that just so I can sell a few pizzas. <laughs> You would choose to do that. I'm not going to make you. Do we put a sign saying pole dancing here tonight? Huh? Right, we can leave. We can leave that in. All right. Directions. Uh, solar energy system. No signs on solar energy systems. That's that's fine. I think that's fine. Good. And then um, more criteria for special exception. Yeah, that's fine. I'd say that's fine. And that's basically holy crap. We're at the end. That's it. And then I have a so, paper. Cool. So we. Possibly have the attorney review this by the 28th. Do we really need to have the attorney review it? You you better if, you're gonna, <laughs> if you're going to try and enforce it, you better. You guys don't want to do it. It's fine. I would think you have to just because it's you're going to use it as an enforcement mechanism. You want to have someone take a look at it, OJ. Okay? Joe, you have any thoughts? As long as it is, and you point, but we never did it before. The, the ordinance we have now has been unenforceable for four years, technically, since the day after the Supreme Court ruling. This is a far better version that's far more enforceable. If someone challenges on it, then we hire an attorney. And if they say, no, what, you, what your ordinance says is wrong, it'll cost us a little bit of money and we give the guy his permit. Oh, girl, okay? 
I agree. I, I just, I don't see paying an attorney to go through all of this stuff. Half of it came from Warner, and it's, which is the, the standard of new sign ordinances. I say we, we take the changes that have made and bring them to the public hearing on January 4th. And yep. why don't we, all right, but let's try to have this ready for the 28th. That way the board can just review it in case there's any changes. The so you're telling me that you're, you're telling me that we probably should have just not even changed it because then then if you some someone challenged it then you could you could deal with it that way i mean that's not at all what i'm saying well it, it might as well be OJ because we sat here and went through this ordinance to make it more enforceable if we're going to make it more enforceable we better have somebody take i would think take a look at it you guys in the so so let me Ask this, OJ. I mean, the board of selectmen when they change stuff, they they have an attorney look at it. I mean, this is a signed ordinance that affects something in the town that has been a thorn in its side and unenforceable for many many years. And you're trying to make this something that you can at least be fair and enforce it, and not have to every time somebody comes in. Unenforceable. Well. Look, every That's time somebody that. comes in and has a, has an issue with it, you're gonna say, okay, let, let's check it with an attorney, or they're gonna say, hey, well, you know, we'll, we'll have our attorney look at it. When if you had him look at it in advance, you would know you were right, and you wouldn't have to worry about checking it with an attorney. I, I'm, I don't think you want to just jump the gun because of timing issues here. I think you want to do it right. I mean, this this sign ordinance has been a long time. So let's do it right and have somebody check it over. And I'm just one vote, so that's okay. <laughs> that's kind of how I feel. I, I don't I think, think it's worth the money, but I'm just one vote, and I really don't care. If if the majority here votes yes, we'll do it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna block it. This isn't a big big deal to me, but I think we should have the attorney review it. Let's let's Steve, let's, give me your thoughts. Safety trouble down the road, maybe. Joe? I can't go with OJ. So we got three to two. Three to two. All right, we're going to review it. Have an attorney review it. And one other thing. Um, but it's, it's, it's like we just talked about stormwater management thing tonight. I don't think it'll be good. We've got that all written down, too. But what good did it do me, really? You know? How do you enforce stuff? Looks good on the paper. Uh, so the fines, we're going to have a public hearing on uh, releasing the bond. Has they made the changes? Say that again? Uh, we didn't we talk about having a public hearing to release the bond at the fines. It's not ready. It's not ready. Okay. No, it's not ready. Okay. But we did. We no, did inform David, them. David Yeager emailed me and said everything's fine, right? Right. Well, I got that. I only heard that part of it. And no. Right. Hey. There's, there's still. It's close. Very close. Um, but there's still a couple things that they have not done that they have to work on. Okay. It has more to do with uh, preventing erosion. You know, between now and next spring. Um, so. Can I ask a question about the pines thing? I, I, I wasn't letting make that meeting, but <clears throat> OJ, <clears throat> you and I had, you mainly, but we had a lot of discussion about that fence around the pond. And has anybody gone back and looked at the minutes to see? I know, Jimmy, you know, when you had that meeting, you talked about it just being a guardrail. And then I know we talked about the availability to be able to get somebody out of there. But I guess I just wonder, I kind of thought that there was supposed to be a more permanent solution around there other than just a guardrail. I mean, we if, if you look at what's done down at the, the, the children's center around that little culvert there, you know, you, you tend to think that we would we would have gone a little more. And I, I thought we did. I didn't think that it was just a hundred and some odd feet of guardrail was all it was going to go around that. I thought it was supposed to be, and OJ, I could have sworn you gave, you, you were really adamant about having something around there. 
It didn't need to be a chain link fence or I thought there was something else that was supposed to be around there so that someone could get over it, but it was still a deterrent. This guardrail that they're talking about is only like a hundred and some odd feet. And a bunch of wild roses. I don't think anybody going in. Um, it's, I think we. Do you remember anything? I'll just do over the mask. Yeah. No, as as I remember, we we discussed it and decided the guardrail was important, and we mandated it, and the fence was not. I think so. Yeah, right, you did. Because there's a big pond up by the center there, where they have the pools and all. Mm -hmm. and we figured let's open. Mm -hmm. That's I'm okay right. with that. I just thought that we had discussed it, and I, I could have sworn, OJ, that you had that we had thought it, it had to be something more substantial. And I thought it was in the minutes, but I didn't really. Just like we talked about the Hampton Inn, they were quite a fence, but you know, with all the all the trees gone, there's no bubble between the between the parking lot and the railroad. I still think it should be a shaming fence there. Right, so, so, so the pines have not. Um, requested a bond release yet then? Well, he did when he sent me the email saying, I did everything that they wanted me to do and everything's okay. And so I called over and I said, you do everything you were supposed to do. Mm. And they said, he's close, uh, but there's still a few outstanding issues that need to be fixed. So, um, well, they're getting there. Yeah, I would they're say don't, don't schedule it until. Yeah, no, we we're going to notify all the apartments. Yeah, let's yeah. you know, spend, you know, and David did get stuff done. You know, it's just not quite finished. Okay. All right. Does anyone have anything else? No, yeah. I think I'm burnt. Okay. Well, good. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? No. We we do have a meeting Christmas week, right? The twenty seventh or eighth. Twenty right. eighth. Eighth. That on Wednesday or Tuesday. Wednesday. 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 Okay. Yeah, it's Wednesday. Yeah, and I'm. Uh, I told a couple of you, but um, I'm having surgery in January, January Friday the thirteenth, and I'll be out for two weeks. Thirteenth. Yeah, Friday the thirteenth. Lucky day. Sure. They say you blacked out. Get well caught on it. You won't get well.